My name is Steve Cole. I'm the chancellor of UA Cossetot. I've been here 27 years. And in education, things, they ebb and flow the way we, we push out education. And our college is always going to push out those things that are needed. But I can tell you this, and, and, uh, and you'll hear from a couple people today or two or three that can really tell you that I think a big part of the future of Arkansas is what you see on display right now. And that is, yes, there's always going to be a place for university education. There's always going to be a place for two-year degrees, transfer education. But more and more in Arkansas and I think the country, you're going to see a bigger presence and a bigger need for programs like this. Short-term programs that give people wonderful skills and employers that want to hire them after only four weeks of training. To me, that's a huge part of the future of Arkansas. I really believe that. And so just to give you a little bit of background, this is a grand opening uh, for the aerial lineman program at UA Cossetot. And uh, this is 2024, and I just looked it back at, at a, a chain of emails that included Stephanie Isaacs. You'll hear from Stephanie in just a second. But I looked at a chain of, and Kyla was in there. A lot of us were in those chains of emails that started back in 2021 when the state of Arkansas uh, had received a lot of money to roll out thousands and thousands of miles, and still the case, of fiber to connect this entire state. And we're still doing that, still in the infancy stages. So what we realized and the state realized working with OSD, which is the Office of Skills Development, and a lot of industry partners that said, okay, we need to make sure that we have a workforce that can roll out this installation and that can service that installation after it's installed. And so what you had across the state is you had some parts of the state that did a lot of directional drilling, a lot of trenching, the boring, but then you had a lot of places in Arkansas that's rock. And when you have rocks, it's kind of hard to do directional boring. And so that's where the, the aerial fiber comes in. And that's why we have the aerial lineman program here is because a lot of our fiber across Arkansas is stretched over on, on the poles. And then we have in some parts of the state, we have the tower installation. And so UA Cossetot, UA Moralton, and ASU Three Rivers all came to the table in Little Rock, all those meetings we had, Stephanie, at y'all's office with our industry partners, which this started, our industry partners are here, Keisha Wolf and her, her group uh, from REA, Southwest Arkansas Electric Cooperative, with their uh, uh, effort into um, uh, internet and broadband, and that's four states fiber. Uh, they were at that first table, and also Irvin Cable, and Luke Irvin and the Irvin family, they were sitting at that table too, along with a lot of other industry partners. Mr. Klaus Meyer was at that table. A lot of people saying, hey, okay, here's what we need. Here's what the skills that we need to be teaching, and this is what we need to hire. And so when you have employers, uh, matter of fact, a lot of them here, Four H, you're, you're one of the employers that will hire these folks. Bridgepoint, you guys will hire these folks. Bridgepoint's out of Plano, uh, Texas. You have uh, RH Cable and uh, 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 NEA, right? You guys are out of Jonesboro. You guys hire these uh, graduates. And so we are teaching the skills developed in what industry wanted, and we're doing that in four weeks. And uh, this is our third class, fourth? Yes, sir. Fourth class, Dennis, sorry. Dennis Davis, I remember that. Dennis Davis is our instructor. Uh, the first instructor of this program that helped kind of get us going was Scotty Morris. And Scotty is here, and Scotty went back into retirement, and that's where he pulled Dennis out of retirement. And, and got him uh, uh, enjoying what he's doing. But y'all, what we have developed here is a really short-term way to provide these workers, and I'm pointing at you guys because you're going through the program, as soon as they're done, there are people ready to hire you, which is awesome. And that's what the state needs. And so we all sat at those tables in Little Rock for a long time and said, okay, now what's the curriculum look like? Okay, now how do we pay for it? Well, that's where industry partners came to the table, but that's also where the Office of Skills Development came in because a big part of what Stephanie Isaacs, who's the director of the Office of Skills Development, a big part of what they do is they help fund those types of programs that lead to jobs in Arkansas. And that is huge. And so that's why we're having this grand opening. 
And I'm going to have Stephanie say a word or two in just a second, but I want to make sure uh, that everyone is represented. Uh, we have Bridgepoints represented here because they hire our graduates. Uh, we have RH Cable. You guys hire our graduates. Uh, we have um, Cam Gomez. Cam, if you'll wave. Cam Gomez. Uh, I got a text earlier from Glenn Howie. Uh, Glenn is the uh, Arkansas State Broadband Director in Arkansas. He is in Van Buren as we speak, but he sent Cam, and Cam wanted to come down, and Cam grew up around this program, right, Cam? You grew up as a lineman, right? your, your father was a lineman, so he knows exactly what y'all are going through. But Cam is with the Arkansas State Broadband Office, and they have a, a vested interest to make sure that we have all this stuff rolled out. And uh, Keisha, you and you, you folks from Four States Fiber, we're glad you're here, and Bobby and Jim and Scotty. And uh, Deanne Vaughts, our state representative, and she is here. Deanne, if you'll wave. Uh, Deanne, obviously, uh, we talk all the time, because <laughs> Deanne's always saying, what, what can we do for you guys? And they're really, really good at that. So, Dan, thank you for supporting this college and, and this program. But, y'all, this, this is a big deal. Lineman program is a big deal. And I'll go ahead and let the cat out of the bag. Well, it's not, not in the bag. But I'll just let you know that less than two months ago, uh, this college, along with help with uh, Glenn Howie, who supports it, and uh, also uh, Marty Allen with the Diamond State Network, he helped put this grant together. But we have actually written a grant, and I hope we get it. Uh, because it is a multi-million dollar grant to establish a fiber optic network engineering program on our campus. Because we think that would be a perfect uh, program to augment what we're doing with area alignment. And so we hope that that's something that we find out very soon about if, if we're going to get that grant. Because we're really looking forward to teaching that as well. So enough from me as Chancellor of the College. I, I, y'all, I'm, I'm proud of this college. I'm proud of all these things that we offered. I'm proud of y'all, especially the students that we graduate. Right now, though, I want, oh, by the way, Kyla Waters. Kyla did not want to speak, she told me, but Kyla is with Arkansas Community Colleges. And uh, we have another meeting at four o'clock today. We have some things to talk about. But anyhow, Kyla's here. She was at that table at OSD for every meeting. And, and uh, Arkansas Community Colleges helped manage this lineman program. And so uh, without further ado, I know Stephanie wants to say a word or two. Stephanie Isaacs, we've known Stephanie a long time. Stephanie, huge supporter of not just secondary education in Arkansas, but post-secondary and also workforce education. And uh, her office, the Office of Skills Development, uh, they do a lot for the state and to provide programs that students like this need. And so, Stephanie, if you want to say a couple words about our alignment program, come on up. Stephanie Isaacs. Steve pretty much said it all, um, but I want to just commend the employers who came to the table. Um, you are our customers. So sometimes at colleges we get mixed up and we think that um, students are our customers, but the employers who are here today and employers around the state, you're our customers. And, and at OSD and at the state, we want to make sure that we're serving your needs. So we want to provide the best product we can provide for you in terms of these um, work workers that you're going to hire. So we want your continued input. So you came to the table, you helped us develop this, but at OSD, we want to hear you. We want to make sure this is not something that we're just going to set in stone. We're going to accredit it. It's forever. You need to constantly be working with us, with Kyla, with the college to say, this is what we need. This is what we see. The last group we hired, they were great, but here's what you could do to make it better because you're our ultimate customer. So um, I just want to thank Kyla because Kyla does all the work. Um, I'm the easy part. I'm just write the checks at the end of the day. Kyla gives me all the information I need, um, all the equipment. The, the total investment's around $4 million over the past two years for equipment and training. Um, so it, it's a big, it, it's teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Couldn't do it without great partners like Steve and Tammy here at the college and the instructors here and you guys. I mean, they're our customers but you're our product and we're so proud of you. And I'm so proud to be just a tiny bit of this project. So thank you everybody for being part of the team. And y'all, I, I, I hate that, um, that uh, I mean, I'm, Rick, I'm, I'm glad you're here, but I just hate Luke couldn't be here. Luke Urban with Urban Cable Construction. And uh, you guys, uh, I know you see their trucks uh, all around, not just Arkansas, you see them around the country. You see that ECCC on the side. And what you see here, uh, this pole yard, uh, a lot of uh, what you see here is patterned after their training facility 
uh, in Sturgis, Kentucky. Matter of fact, there's a graduate right there from that facility. And we had a chance to go visit that facility back in December and uh, to see how they did things and uh, see, how they, uh, see how they put things together. Um, but uh, Luke and uh, the Urban family, they were at the table at the very start of this because they say, here's what we need. Now, and that also means that they're needing it. Everyone else in this business needs it too. But uh, Rick uh, Giesler, did I get that right? Yes, sir. Oh, Rick Giesler, uh, he is here to represent one of our very first industry partners in this program, Rick Giesler with Urban Cable. Rick, come on up and say one. Uh, thank you very much. So uh, it's important that we, uh, first of all, thank you for having us, uh, being invited here to UA. Um, I think something that's, that's very important that's overlooked is that a lot of these big companies like us, we come into your guys' uh, you know, communities, uh, we, we come in, we make a bunch of money, we leave, right? But that, that's not what we want to do. We want to provide a place for local people to be able to help us with these as well. And with these colleges, and you guys being a front runner for that here at UA, uh, allowing students to come in, get some training, you know, it's only four weeks of training, but the amount of safety and, you know, um, taking care of these young students, it's, it's pivotal for our industry and for us to be able to have these good, you know, starts and, and good base for what we are going to move on from there. So, you know, programs like this are uh, instrumental in us being able to make our industry safer, to make our industry a better place, to, to drive better wages for, you know, all these young people, and so that they have a home. Uh, let's, you know, let's face it, there's, there's a, you know, not a lot of opportunities in some places, and there's more opportunities in other places. And for somebody to be able to have the forethought and the wherewithal to say, hey, look, we need this program to help our young people, I commend you all for that. And, and uh, we're just benefiting from that. So, you know, uh, they're going to benefit, hopefully, from us having a home here and being able to uh, give them a place to work. But, you know, none of this gets done without them. So, you know, thanks again for UA and for, for all of you that have put this together from a state standpoint or, you know, local standpoint, wherever that has came from. And, and we just are, are glad that we have partners like y'all and, and we hope that we have a, you know, nice long uh, relationship. So thank you very much for allowing us to be here. Yeah, I was talking about the, the class at Sturgis, you know, when we visited, uh, it was six degrees. And uh, right, Mike? Mike was there. But we went up, it was last December, it was six degrees, and Speedy, the instructor there, if y'all know, y'all need to meet Speedy sometime. Speedy's awesome. And, uh, but he, uh, they still, that was graduation day. And uh, graduation day in their curriculum, uh, they do pole rescue. And so six degrees, they're on top of the pole uh, rescuing that dummy. And, uh, and uh, they had three minutes. And Speedy, Speedy's sitting in the truck, I know y'all don't wanna hear this. He's sitting in the, the, the bucket truck, drinking coffee, heater on, with a stopwatch. If it hit three minutes, he just honked the horn and they had to come back down and start all over again. I said, those poor guys. Man, Speedy's just drinking coffee, enjoying the day. Uh, Josh with System Services. I wanted to make sure I, I missed you a minute ago. I wanted to make sure Josh with System Services, they're here as well. Um, also wanted to, to uh, invite, uh, because they were original, uh, the designers of this curriculum and our very first instructor, and I think he's actually been nominated to speak on y'all on the behalf of the company. So, uh, you know, when we first started this program, uh, it it does take a very special person to instruct. First, have the knowledge, but then have the desire to want to teach this to our, our future graduates. And those are rare, rare finds. And we actually ha happen to be blessed with two. Uh, our very first one who helped design this curriculum and fine tune the curriculum uh, was Scotty Morris. We pulled him away from retirement just long enough to get this thing moving forward. And then, uh, and then Dennis took over from there and, and the rest is history. But Scotty, I know Scotty wants to say a couple of words and I want him to say a couple of words on behalf of uh, Four States, uh, one of our uh, original industry partners and uh, one of the original groups that put this curriculum together. So Scotty. All right, thank you, Steve. Um, my name, for the ones that don't know me, my name is Scotty Morris. I worked for Southwest Arkansas Electric Co-op for 37 years, and I can't imagine doing anything different. 
Um, I retired a little over a year ago, and like literally the day after I retire, I get a phone call say, hey, you need to come visit me. And I said, man, I'm not going back to school. <laughs> but anyway, Steve told me what was going on out here. Of course, I kind of kind of knew a little bit about it already, but um, he, he wanted to know if I'd help get it going. And I said, well, I said, this is not really my field. My field is electric, but uh, I think I can help you. And I was asking him, I said, well, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And it didn't take me long till I figured out I need to be talking to Tammy Coleman. Where's Tammy at? <laughs> but anyway, she's the gears that makes everything go. I heard her and Mike Kincaid. But anyway, um, he's telling me about the deal at Sturgis. And I said, well, it sounds to me like I need to go to Sturgis. And he goes, take off. So I got me and my wife got in my truck. We went to Sturgis. And the first day I was up there, they had their, they had a, um, a new first day class and they first thing they did is put them on the poles and I said I like that because that's my it's what I like to do but anyway it was interesting because they was throwing the basketball or football or whatever it was they had around to the poles and I got to visit them the the speedy guy that um, Steve's talking about he was out in the field that week so I didn't get to meet him but uh, y'all um, I told Steve I said I said, for this thing to be successful, I said, you got to have good people supporting it. And I said, I think y'all already got that covered. And I said, you got to have good people coming into these classes. And I said, you got to treat, you got to train these guys up to where they're a valuable hire. Whenever me and Bobby and Jimmy came up, it was school of hard knocks. I mean, you just went out there and went to work. But. For Southwest Arkansas, the last few years, we've always tried to hire individuals that's went through some kind of a program such as this. And it's it's just like anything else. You've got to start them out with the right work ethic and the right safety ethic. Because guys, this is this is uh this is dangerous work. I mean that's just no way of getting around it. It's dangerous. You up there near electricity, that will that's unforgiving. But anyway, we got this built and uh, got the classroom situated and ordering the trucks and the equipment. We found out real quick that that wasn't just something we was going to get out of Amazon this week. I think these trucks, like Steve's already said, it took forever to get these trucks and these belts. Just little stuff like you can't imagine, just like the gaps and the... Uh, tool belts it's just the lead time is months and it's hard to figure that because it's hard for Tammy to figure all that because she don't know how many students she's going to have sticking with this but I think she's got it nailed down now and it's all working pretty smooth but um, we got it all built I told Steve I said listen I said I've done what I can do for you and I said we found a man that um uh, this is his line of work, and he's retired, and he's ready. He's looking for something a little softer to work on. So we found Dennis, recommended him to Steve, and from what I hear, he's done an excellent job. And um, I'm proud to see these guys standing here today because you put them on a pole the first day, there's going to be two or three of them going to go, nah, I don't think this is exactly what I thought it was. I mean, it's just, it's going to happen. But once they determine that that's what they want to do, they're going to make a good employee. And I appreciate everything that everybody's done, Southwest Arkansas. I talked to Keisha about helping with the poles and equipment, and they was generous enough to help do that. And Jimmy brought his crew out here, and we designed this thing. And then Mike, he took care of the classroom and... Uh, the rest is history, and uh, I think there's going to be a lot of good things come out of this parking lot right here. Thank y'all. Thanks, Scotty. And uh, Michelle reminded me that all, uh, Desert Media, De Desert Media Group, they were going to come, but they're they're also they're they'll be here to talk to the students. That's one thing I want to remind everyone that you know the reason we're here is right there in the safety vest. And I do want to point out, speaking of safety, 
is I remember the very first conversations we had uh, in those rooms in Little Rock. And the very first thing that Luke said and Jeff Tollett said, everyone said in those rooms, they said, you don't have enough safety in the curriculum. That was the first thing they said. There's not enough safety. Because that's one thing we wanted to make sure, like Scotty said, you guys are working very, very close to a lot of electricity. And safety is first and foremost on the mind of Dennis now that you're teaching. And right, guys, that's the first thing y'all go through, right? Safety. And because of OSD and their generosity, when these students are going through this program, they, when they graduate soon, they actually get to take all of their belts and safety equipment with them into the field. It's theirs to keep. That's $2,300 worth of equipment that they get to keep because they're used to it. It's yours. And so they get that that goes with them. And so that, again, makes them just wonderfully more employable. But you're the reason we're here. And so uh, that's, that's it. That's our, that's our grand opening. And all I know is that our, our plan is to graduate uh, to enroll and graduate 100 students every year. That's our goal. And, uh, and hopefully that will help take care of a little bit of the supply problem that we're having in, the, in this industry. So I want to thank everyone for coming. And uh, it's a good time. So hang around. Let's have some refreshments and, uh, and welcome. Thank you guys very much. I'm Barbara Dixon and this is Anna Belcher and we're with Southern Bancor Bank. Southern is a different kind of bank. Um, we are a designated community development financial institution and our main focus, our mission is to be involved in and serve the community. And um, what makes us different is we offer traditional banking services, but we also offer other services um, that help strengthen our community to teach them financial literacy and to help them um, to build credit, understand credit, and to uh, make good, wise choices. Some of the programs we offer, we have a learning center that covers everything from savings to loans to small business, housing. There's also a section of that uh, website that is designated for youth that's broken up by age groups so you can get um, financial literacy information for your children on that website. There's a section for senior citizens as well. Um, we also offer free credit review. We will help you pull your free credit report, go over it with you, give you the resources to review it and to know what to look for. We offer a credit builder CD loan to help you start building credit history or to improve your credit history. We also offer free counseling services, whether you want to just do a budget or just ask questions, uh, that service is free and it's all free to customers and non-customers alike. We offer free home ownership counseling services. We offer free income tax preparation through the VITA program. It's a voluntary income tax preparation assistance program. And for consumers who qualify, we prepare their taxes free. We will be doing that right here in the Locksburg branch. A lot of what uh, Southern does is they try to strengthen the community, it, the businesses and individuals a lot. And we are considered our, one of our models is to be wealth builders for everyone. And one of the primary ways we start that is by teaching savings habits. And Anna is going to tell you a little bit about some of those. We have a few savings products that's going on right now. One is our Roundup Savings. Every time you use your debit card, you can either round up to the next dollar amount or you can round up a, a certain dollar, whether it's one or five, just whatever is convenient for you. And we also have what is called an app that you can download and the app is called Envy. And it is a savings game. It's a hundred days process and you determine how much you want to save in 100 days and every day that you go into the app you open the envelope and it may transfer a dollar it may transfer two dollars whatever is in that envelope on that app that day is how much it transferred your savings account we also have what we call a CD credit builder loan if you are just starting out and getting credit or you've just graduated from school and you're having a hard time uh, getting credit because you have no credit score 
or even if you have past uh, negative credit, then you can come in and we can start you out with credit of, of a CD loan and that also gives you a CD. When you pay your loan off, that CD is your money. And Southern uh, believes in Sevier County. We believe in empowering our community and we are thankful to be here in Sevier County and we look forward to serving Sevier County and the people in this community for years to come. set for NJCAA college basketball tonight as the Lady Colts get set to take on North Arc Community College. Lauren Hinton courtside as we get set for tonight's games. Lady Colts and the Colts, as we say, conference games. It's a doubleheader. And uh, I guess it was back on January 18th, UAC traveled up to Harrison and came up on the short end of the scoreboard. Uh, ladies wound up uh, taking a conference loss that night. And the uh, final score was 65-57, uh, there it is. Anyway, that particular night, Carson Edwards led the way with 14 points for North Arc. Sydney Standridge had 11, while Kaylee Patrick and Kaylin Garris each had 10. And uh, the uh, North Arc team is now four and three in conference play. They're three and six on the road, eight and 13 overall. Uh, on that uh, night in January up in uh, Harrison, Samaya Smith led the Lady Colts with 13 while Hannah McLean added 10. Now the Lady Colts have four players averaging in double figures, led by Hannah McLean with 14. Sophia Reyes at 12, Kiana Holly 12, and uh, also uh, uh, Coriana Fulbright averaging 12 points a game. Now that particular night, it was uh, the shooting of North Arc playing a big part, especially the uh, shooting of Kaylee Patrick as uh, she wound up with 24 points that night. Averages 10 points a game. Had a big night that night. Had 24, including four out of seven three point range. Meanwhile, Sydney Standridge added 20 points that night. And as we said, she comes in averaging about 11 points a game. Now the Lady Colts are number two in the country as far as free throws made per game. They're number six in the country in free throw attempts and number 12 in America in free throw percentage, shooting 70% at the line. So the key's gonna be try to get to the, uh, get to the free throw line and uh, see if we can do some damage, right? Anyway, these two teams, very close in the conference standings. Uh, of course, in the conference, the uh, SAU Tech team leading the way with uh, a record of 6-0 in conference play. Then it's Shorter and North Arc at 4-3, tied for second, and UAC in fourth place at 2-3 on the conference season. As we get set for our national anthem, we'll turn things over to UH Cossacks PA announcer John Bundy with our national anthem and our play-by-play.
ahead. That's your starting lineup as we get set for UA Casa Todd basketball here on N88. Let's take a look at that crowd, my friend. Check these folks out. Ashdown Elementary sending a number of students over tonight. Ought to have a definite home court advantage as they came in right after the national anthem and added a little bit of extra spice to the atmosphere this evening. Here at UA Casa Todd, we grilled a bunch of hot dogs for them. They'll be eating at our, on our dime tonight, and that's okay. It's good to have a good crowd. As this North Ark crew is uh, used to playing in front of a, a full house, one of the, from what I see, they're like the fourth leading team in Division II when it comes to attendance. Lady Pioneers work at left side. Lady Colts, Jerry Cotton up top. Defensively, three-pointer on the way from the right side, up and in. Knocking it down from beyond the arc is Kalen Garris. Garris with a three. Lady Colts down, three zip. With a basketball up top. Lady Colts will work it right side. Samaya Smith lobs it inside. Reyes is going to be called late whistle that time. No doubt about it. Thought she might have got by with that. Well, she's kind of out in the open now for that to happen and uh, hitting the deck and drawing the foul with Sydney Standridge as Reyes picks up the personal foul. Sophia's first first team foul against the Lady Colts with the basketball up top. That's Samaya Smith with a basket. Apologize for that break in the action. There had some connectivity problems here at the Bank of Locksburg gym as the Lady Colts have taken the lead. 7-3, bringing it the other way. Jarrett Cotton, cross court, over to McLean. A couple of ladies on the court right now. Big collision down low between Standridge and Fulbright. They've been battling all night long on the other side underneath, whistle and a foul. And that is going to be on Standridge, I believe. That'll be her second. And head to the free throw line. Will be Hannah McLean. Lady Colts on top, 7-3. Again, our apologies. It's Kiana Holly tied the game at three. Once we lost our connection. And at the free throw line, that's Hannah McLean. Knocks it down. So McLean will have another one coming here. She'll have uh, second shot by McLean's up and in. <laughs> Lady Colts lead it now by a score of 9-3. to three. We'll be back with more in a moment here on 888radio.com. New Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay. I'm going to try it first. Yes! I need to try it first. Tell me you were getting McDonald's. Mix and match the egg McMuffin, sausage McMuffin with egg, or bacon egg and cheese biscuit. With any two for just five dollars, you might realize you're a morning person too. All right, we're back live as the Lady Colts lead it by a score of nine to three. Garris with a basketball across the midcourt stripe fires. Right side, three-pointer on the way by Garris. That one won't go. Rebound tipped around, chased out of bounds, saved into the hands of Jarrett Cotton. Cotton gets it ahead to Samaya Smith. Fires it down court. Looks underneath. Instead, Cotton's got it back out to Smith. Smith on the perimeter. Lady Colts working outside. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Smith backs it out. Going around the screen by Fulbright. Smith will fire it up. Can't get it to go. Rebound, Standridge had it, rebound comes off into the hands of the uh, of Abby Hodges. Working it down low, they'll work it back left side, three-pointer on the way, no good. Rebound, Garris grabs it. She'll back it back out. Ball goes out of bounds, last touch by the Lady Colts.
Three-pointer on the way from the left corner. Air ball picked up by Hannah McLean. McLean will get it off to Smith. Lady Colts will bring it the other way, leading 9-3. 4.20 to go, first quarter. McLean out on the left wing. Gets it back out to Kiana Holly. Holly traveling is a call. Good defense that time. Getting into the, into the lane that time was Kaylee Patrick. Set up a roadblock. Holly called for the travel. Lady Colts turned it off. Tara Cotton comes out of the lineup. And checking in in her place will be Alexis Hernandez. Hernandez putting pressure on Garris. Garris with it up top. Goes around the screen. Ball tipped away. Picked up by Smith. Good D that time by Holly. Samaya with it. Gets it over to Kiana. All alone for the three-pointer. Can't get it to go. Rebound. Standridge goes high to grab it. Here come the Pioneers on the attack. Pull up. From eight, no, rebound. Smith, off her foot, out of bounds. No, it's actually gonna be out. The official's right there. It says it came off of the foot of Kaylee Patrick. Well, I can't blame Patrick for saying the Pioneers had it because I, I, from sitting here it looked that way anyway. Official right there, gives it to Lady Colts. He'll bring it the other way. Lob pass inside. Loose ball picked up by Patrick. And she is fouled from behind and from in front. Let's see, her personal foul is going to be on number 30 for the Lady Colts. That's Amaya Smith called for the personal foul. Smith called for the personal. That's her first. Lady Colts on top, 9-3, 3-32. Three, Big crowd on hand tonight as Ashdown Elementary School has packed the... Uh, Far side of the gym. Underneath, loose ball, picked up. Lady Colts, Smith with it. Samaya sets the offense, works it right side. Kiana Holly takes a dribble, back out to Smith. Takes off, good defense, but a little too good a defense that time. A push on the shot, that's gonna be on Kessel Willis. Willis called for the personal, that's her first. That is the uh, fifth team foul against North Ark. And at the free throw line will be Samaya Smith. Smith on the night. First trip to the free throw line. She's got two points, and she still has two points, as that one's off no good. Lady Colts, two out of three at the free throw line tonight. As we said, one of the top teams shooting percentage in the country, coming in at 70% from the free throw line. Samaya's second shot's on the way. It's up and in. And the crowd goes wild. Great atmosphere tonight as the Lady Colts on top 10-3. Three. three minutes to go, first quarter. Ball deep in that right corner. Having some trouble down there. Loose ball on the court. Picked up by Hernandez. Alexis gets it in the hands of Kiana Holly. Holly works it ahead to Samaya Smith. Here come the Lady Colts on the attack. They're working left wing. Cotton back out front. Right side, Kiana Holly couldn't quite control that. I said that was Jared Cotton. That's actually Hannah McLean in the lineup. Hannah McLean, Alexis Hernandez, Samaya Smith, Coriana Fulbright, and also in that lineup right now is Kiana Holly. Lady Pioneers in the corner. Standridge couldn't quite control that pass. Pass a little low and outside that time. And the ball turns over the Lady Colts. They lead it 10-3. Kiana Holly works it right corner. Hernandez fires up the three. High arching shot won't go. There's McLean. Samaya Smith comes out of there with it. And let's see. And the Lady Colts will turn it over. And we'll get a couple of substitutions in for the Lady Colts. The uh, Lady Pioneers have a very short bench. They only bring seven players when they come to town. Those seven were good enough back in January at Harrison. Left side, long three-pointer off the back of the iron. No good. Standridge is there. She's fouled from behind. Victoria Burns called for the foul on the rebound attempt. Burns giving up about nine inches in height and was not gonna get that rebound over the top of Standridge. Lob pass in. Pioneers have it, deep in that left corner, three-pointer, high arching shot, air ball picked up by Jarrah Cotton. Cotton on the run, gets it ahead to Hernandez, drives inside, 
Puts it off the glass, can't get it to go. Standridge with another rebound. Lady Pioneers on the attack. Good screen that time by Kaylee Patrick. Three-pointer on the way, can't go. Rebound picked up by Hernandez. Alexis wants to run, drives all the way, puts it up, has a shot blocked by Standridge. And let's see here. Whistle and a foul is gonna be called on Victoria Burns. Burns has called for her second personal foul. That is the fifth team foul against the Lady Colts. And we'll walk to the other end. Heading to the free throw line will be Kessa Willis. Willis will head to the free throw line. She'll shoot. First one's on the way, no good. Lady Colts on top, 10-3. North Ark scored the first three-pointer of the night, and they haven't scored since. 10 straight points for Lady Colts, and the run is over. As Willis hit that second one, Lady Colts on the perimeter. Jared Cotton gets it back out. Three-pointer on the way by Kiana Holly. it. That's how the Lady Colts started that last 10-point run. Was with a three-pointer by Holly. She's got a pair of them. Lady Colts on top, 13-4. Biggest lead of the night. Here come the Lady Colts. Burns into the front court, right side. Holly thought about it. Instead drives it. Oh, what a pass inside. Got it to Fulbright. She couldn't hit it. And the rebound comes off to Standridge, as most of them do. And we've got a blocking foul going to be called. And let's see. That's going to be on Hernandez. Hernandez got the foul, and she got the worst end of that. Wound up on her backside. And after the blocking foul, heading to the free throw line will be Kaylee Patrick. Lady Colts on top, 13 to four. That one no good. Lady Pioneers, one out of three at the free throw line. They trail at 13-4 with 52.4 seconds to go. First quarter, second shot, rattles around and goes down. Patrick knocks it down, and the Lady Colts have it on top, 13 to five. Burns gets it right side, Holly. Left side, three-pointer on the way, won't go. Rebound, almost chased down by Fulbright in the corner, couldn't quite get there. And the Lady Pioneers will get it back with 35 seconds to go in this first quarter. Trailing 13 to five. The 10 second clock, shot clock and game clock differential here. Garris has it up top. Gets it into the hands of Patrick. Back out to Garris. Fires it back out to Patrick. Kaylee fires it inside. Oh, nice defensive tip that time by Holly. Knocking it out of bounds. And the Lady Pioneers will reset the offense deep in that left corner. They'll work it out front to Garris. Tries to attack. Fires it back all alone. Now they try to work inside to Standridge. Standridge, wow, big collision down low. No call. Lady Colts have it. Burns, three seconds to go. Three-pointer by Holly, and it's in and out. No good. So close. We've come to the end of the first quarter of play. Our score, Lady Colts lead it by a margin of 30, uh, 13 to five. We'll be back with more in a moment here on 888radio.com. For your season of life, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. Come home. To Farmers Bank. Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives lanyards and power bank chargers just let the staff know what you need and who knows they might even model it for you show your casa tot school spirit get your colts merchandise today at an erc near you 
And we're back to action, second quarter at the start. Lady Colts have it, deep in the right corner, underneath Fulbright. It's gonna be hammered underneath. Personal foul is gonna be called on Kessel Willis. That'll be her second. Fulbright will head to the free throw line to shoot a pair. Coriano looking for her first points of the night. Lady Colts three out of four at the free throw line tonight. Shot on the way, off the back of the iron, no good. Fulbright looking for her first points of the evening. Second shot, rattles around and goes in. And the Lady Colts regain the lead, their largest lead of the night at nine. Pass stolen away by Fulbright on the run. Gives it up. Cotton takes it underneath. Can't get the layup to go. Bringing it the other way. Lady Colts get it back. They'll work it left side in the corner. Cotton gets it back out front. Smith, three-pointer on the way by McLean. Can a shot. It's up the Hannah McLean with a three. The third three of the night for the Lady Colts. They lead it 17 to five. Standridge down low, working, working, and a blocking foul gonna be called against the Lady Colts. Personal foul will be whistled against Sierra Shaw. That's her first. It looks like Shaw, along with Jira Cotton, Samaya Smith, Corey, uh, uh, Fulbright, and Hannah McLean in the lineup for the Lady Colts as they steal it away again. National Park having a hard time, or excuse me, North Ark having a hard time hanging on to that basketball tonight. They're working right side. Smith gets it back out. Three-pointer on the way by Kiana. Holly won't go. The rebound fought for. Picked up by McLean. Couldn't get the wide open layup to go. And a whistle. And the possession arrow points to North Ark. Lady Pioneers get it back. Lady Colts have had some layup opportunities here that haven't went down. They lead it 17 to five. Shot put up, won't go, rebound fought for, coming out of there with it, Shaw. Sierra gives it off to Smith and Samayo brings it across the horsey head. Smith works it right side, pass almost stolen away. Good defense that time by Garris. Lady Colts bring it back out to Smith. 15 on the shot clock. Right side, McLean underneath, Fulbright in traffic. A lot of traffic, and the jump ball is a call. Possession arrow points to Lady Colts. Eight seconds on the shot clock as Lady Colts will set that offense. Smith will make the inbounds pass. And the Lady Colts want a timeout. So again, our score, Lady Colts lead it by a score of 17 to five. We're back in a moment here on 888radio.com. New Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay. I'm gonna try it first. Yes! I need to try it first. Mix and match the Egg McMuffin, Sausage McMuffin with Egg, or Bacon, Egg, and Cheese Biscuit. With any two for just $5, you might realize you're a morning person, too. with it and the traffic that time Kara Cotton has it stripped away coming the other way driving all the way off the glass no good 
Congrats, good job that time by McLean to get back defensively and the Lady Colts get it back. Samaya so Smith will have it. Score can deep in that left corner. Back up top to McLean, out on the wing, works it right side. Smith takes the open three, knocks it down. Samaya so had a moment to think about it. They let her shoot it and she knocked it down. Lady Colts have four three-pointers on the night by three different players. Lady Colts on top, 20 to five, pass down low, out of bounds off of Standridge. And the Lady Colts get it back. And Sydney Standridge couldn't quite control it in traffic down there. Lady Colts with it, Samaya Smith out on the perimeter. McLean works it deep in that left corner. Hernandez tries to fire it through the lane, loose ball on the court. Samaya Smith trying to get rid of it and a jump ball is a call. Smith could not get rid of that ball. Pioneers right there. Kessel Willis able to tie it up and the Lady Colts will get back defensively. As Kaylee Patrick gets set to make the inbounds pass. Hernandez up on top. They'll work it back in the hands of Ashley Hodges. Abby Hodges, that is. Pass underneath. Personal foul is going to be called on Kiana Holly. Carson Edwards trying to drive on the basket that time. I know at least three or four times I've called Carson Edwards by the wrong name. She's been uh, trying to get something going underneath. Lady Colts come out of there with it over the head of Samaya Smith and the Pioneers get it back. 30 seconds on the shot clock. 6.34 to go. First, uh, first half, Lady Colts on top, 20 to five. Edwards fires it inside. Driving on the lane, shot put up tough. Basket that time by Sydney Standridge. Sydney with a basket. Her first two, 20 to seven, Lady Colts on top. Right side, back up top, that's Smith, takes a long three-pointer, in and out, no good. Rebound comes off to Standridge. Sydney works it ahead on the attack, bringing it the other way, Abby Hodges. Abby works it right side, pass underneath. Shot put off the glass and good. Kaylee Patrick, nice move in traffic to get the basket. Makes it 20 to nine. Lady Colts on top by 11 with 5.50 to play. First half. Smith works it right side. Holly takes a long three in there. Kiana Holly, her third trifecta of the night. Lady Colts on top, 23-9. Pioneers with it. Shot put up, no good. Rebound, Kiana Holly. Holly on the run. Gets it into the front court, pulls up, gets it out to Smith, sets the offense right side. Holly takes another one. That one a little bit short, and the Lady Colts can't quite get there. Coming over to cut off Fulbright for the Lady Colts, who was trying to get there and get a hand on that basketball. Nice, uh, nice move on the part of Kessa Willis. Pioneers have it into the front court. Abby Hodges. Fires it right side. Driving down, oh, block shot by McLean. Hannah McLean got up that time as Carson Edwards went up and looked like she was gonna have a layup that time. And McLean got there to block the shot out of bounds. Driving through the lane, shot up, no good. As Edwards lost the handle on it, or couldn't quite come away with it, and the Lady Colts bring it the other way. As Samaya Smith is gonna be fouled by Carson Edwards. Edwards called for the personal foul. That's her second. And Samaya Smith will make the inbounds pass. She'll bring it into the front court. Lady Colts on top, 23 to nine. Under five minutes to play here in this first half. Right side. Hernandez gets it back out front. Driving inside the lane, putting up the one-hander, Samaya Smith. 
Nice drive on the basket by Samaya. Samaya right now with eight points in the ball game. Lady Colts on top, 25 to nine. Pass up top, Kaylee Patrick inside, battling, has the ball stripped away. Samaya Smith comes out of there with it. Drives in the corner, three-pointer on the way by Hernandez, won't go, and the rebound is gonna be pulled down by Kaylee Patrick. Patrick on the drive, works it right side, back up top, driving into the lane, and we're gonna have a whistle and a foul. That's gonna be on Holly. Kiana called for the personal foul. That'll be uh, the second one on Holly. Looks like Hernandez and Smith are gonna come out of the lineup and checking back in will be Burns. Looks like uh, Burns, Holly, Fulbright, McLean, and Jarrett Cotton in the lineup for the Lady Colts. That first free throw on the way by Carson Edwards is up and good. Carson's first point of the night. Lady Colts lead it. 25-10 as that second shot is no good. And the rebound comes off the Lady Colts. Burns will bring it the other way. Victoria almost lost it up top. Good defense out there by Patrick, and we're gonna have a backcourt called on the Lady Colts. As Burns feeling the pressure from Kaylee Patrick. Good defensive play by Patrick, and the Lady Colts will turn it over. Pioneers will have it. Down to 3.47 to play in this first half. Lady Colts on top, 25-10. They'll work it right side. Into the hands of Patrick. Kaylee gets it. Carson Edwards back to Patrick. Fires it back out left side beyond the arc. Collision inside. It's going to be a blocking foul going to be called. Oh, let's see. I think that's uh, Kiana Holly. That's going to be her third. Holly got there just a fraction too slow. And she's going to replace back in that lineup. Coming right back in again after a short breather will be Samaya Smith. Smith, Burns, Fulbright. McLean, Cotton in the lineup. Is that first free throw up and in by Kessa Willis. Willis, two out of three at the free throw line tonight. Second shot, up and in. By the way, that's Sierra Shaw in the lineup, not Coriana Fulbright for the Lady Colts. Lady Colts lead it 25-12. They'll work it right side in the corner, Smith. Gets it back over to Shaw. Sierra fires it right back out to Burns. Victoria goes right side to Smith, inside, looking for Hannah McLean. Ball stolen away, coming the other way with it. Pioneers on the fast break. Couldn't get the layup to go. Both of these teams have had trouble hitting layups tonight albeit they have mostly been contested. Lady Colts work it right side. That's Shaw, Shaw gets it to Smith, back up top, Burns has it, Victoria gets it right back out, right side, as Samaya Smith takes a long three, can't get it to go, and the rebound's gonna be pulled down by Standridge. Sydney gives it up. Kaylee Patrick, left side, fronted over there by Jara Cotton. Right side. Edwards, pass to Standridge, and uh, she gets tangled up with Jarrah Cotton, and Cotton's gonna pick up the personal foul. Cotton came over to try to get a hand on that basketball, got tangled up, and that will be the first foul on Jarrah Cotton. Fulbright's gonna come in, and Cotton's gonna come out. Standridge will head to the free throw line. Sydney's first trip to the charity stripe tonight. She has two points, make it three in the game as that one's up and in. Just joining us, North Ark hit a three to start the game as uh, Kaylin Garris hit a three, took a three nothing lead, and then the Lady Colts reeled off 10 straight and haven't been headed since. 25-14 is that second free throw by Standridge up and good. She's got four, Lady Colts have that lead cut back to 11, 25-14. Smith gets it over to Burns, right side it goes to McLean. Hannah off the dribble, lobs it, left side, I think she lost the handle on that pass, picking it out of the air is Burns, right side, 
Three-pointer on the way by Sierra Shaw, no good, but a whistle underneath. That's gonna be on Samaya Smith. Smith has called for her second personal foul, I believe it is. And we'll walk to the other end. North Ark will have an opportunity to cut its single digits here. He's heading to the free throw line, will be Carson Edwards. Minute 54 to play, first half. Lady Colts on top, 25-14. First shot on the way no, is up and in. Carson Edwards now. Two out of three at the free throw line. Second free throw, no good. And the Lady Colts have it. Burns with it, facing some pressure there from Patrick. Gets it right side. Smith thought about the three. Steps back, gets it out to Shaw. Sierra, back to Burns, back over to Shaw. Deep in that right corner, there's Samaya Smith for three. There is it. Samaya Smith. She's got 10, and the Lady Colts lead it. 28, 15, driving down low, shot no good. And let's see. Lady Colts come out of there with it. As Smith has it, gets it out. To McLean. Hannah works it back over to Samaya. McLean will take the three. Can't get it to go. Rebound is wow, everybody's on the court here. Lady Colts had two down. One down for the uh, Pioneers. And getting up a little gingerly over there. Oh, I see. She lost her shoe. That's going to be Sierra Shaw. Gets that, trying to get that shoe bag on. And the Pioneers get it after the ball went out of bounds with a minute to go in this first half. Lady Colts on top, 28-15. Patrick has it. Kaylee works it right side in the corner. Now they're working back left side. Out on the wing. They get it back over to Patrick. And a whistle and a foul. And that is going to be called against the Lady Colts. Hannah McLean. And it looks like Carson Edwards is going to come out of the lineup and checking in in her place will be Samantha George. At the free throw line will be Kaylee Patrick. Patrick one out of two at the free throw line tonight. Make it one out of three. She has three points in the ball game. Lady Colts on top by 13, 46 seconds to go in this first half. Second shot's up and in. Kaylee Patrick. Knocks it down. Lady Colts on top by a dozen with 41 seconds to go. It's about a 16 second shot clock, game clock differential. As the pass stolen away by Patrick. Kaylee working across the midcourt stripe. Drives into the lane, scoops it up, can't get it to go, and a charging foul. Gonna be called on Patrick. Patrick went coast to coast. Tried to finish and couldn't. Call for the personal foul. That's her first. Actually, that's her second, and the Lady Colts have it. With 25 seconds to go, shot clock is off. Samaya Smith up top, we'll take a little bit of time off the clock. Coach Stan directing some traffic out there. McLean takes her position at the free throw line. Clock down to eight seconds. Samaya will take the long three-pointer in and out, won't go. Two seconds, one second, and that should just about do it. And we've come to the end of the first half of play. Our score, Lady Colts 28, North Ark 16. We'll be back with a look at some first half stats after this here on N88radio.com. Walk into the Coca-Cola facility in Nashville you get a taste of Southwest Arkansas history from the past 100 years. The Wilson family bottled their very first Coke in Nashville back in 1911, and the rest is history. The office in Nashville offers an outstanding museum of Coca-Cola memorabilia, and it's open free to the public weekdays from 8 till 4. The Nashville Coca-Cola Distribution Center employs 20 people and serves several counties in southwest Arkansas with a complete assortment of Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper products. 
The Wilson family is known for their generosity in our community, and they're thankful to Southwest Arkansas for your support over the past century. And the Colts are thankful to Coca-Cola for everything they do for UA Casita. Time going on here at the uh, Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. We're gonna have a little dance off with our Ashdown Elementary students, and there are a bunch of them in the stands across the way. Check this out, folks. I mentioned earlier the uh, North Arc team is used to having a big crowd there at Harrison. We got a big one tonight. Anyway, as far as the uh, Scoring's concerned here in this first half. Lady Pioneers hit a three-pointer to start the game as uh, Kaylin Garris hit a three to make it three-nothing. Lady Colts reeled off 10 straight and have been in the lead ever since, leading 28-16 at the half. Lady Colts are led at the half by Samaya Smith with 11, including two three-pointers. Nine points in the first half, Kiana Holly, all of those from beyond the arc. Five points first half for Hannah McLean. Look for two points for Jarrah Cott and one point for Coriana Fulbright for the Lady Pioneers. Kaylee Patrick and uh, Sydney Standridge leading the way with four points each. Three points tonight for Kessel Willis and Kaylin Garris and two points at the half by Carson Edwards. We'll be back with more in a moment here on NADARadio.com. You were getting McDonald's? Mix and match the Egg McMuffin, Sausage McMuffin with Egg, or Bacon Egg and Cheese Biscuit. With any two for just $5, you might realize you're a morning person too. Good afternoon, everybody. How are you doing today? All right, a couple things about this. This is National Signing Day, for those of you who don't know that. Most, most people do. National Signing Day. And it's kind of a misnomer when you look at it because when you talk about signing itself, it is now almost all digital. There's no physical signing of it. So we don't have anything up here to sign per se. But it is a physical commitment to us and to the team to go and be a part of UA Costat and the Shooting Colts. Um, we were running a little late. We were actually doing a little bit of gun testing between the signing we had this morning and this afternoon. And so we were leaving the range, and I looked down and realized we were running late, so we had to kind of make up a little bit of time. Um, sorry about that. We try not to be late that often, but it sometimes happens. It's easy to get distracted on the range. My wife is convinced that the range is the worst place in the world. It's a black hole of my time. It's, it's a, uh, but we, we are so excited to be here today with you all. I'm glad you all could show up and be here and celebrate Bill's time and all his accomplishments that he's done because he has worked so hard for a number of years. How long, how long have you been shooting? Eight years. He's been shooting for eight years, and it sums up to this. And we're honored to be able to offer him the opportunity to come to UA Costat and shoot and become part of our shooting team, which we can see some of the gentlemen over here. They're around somewhere. There's Landon and Trey and Drake. All members of our, our team uh, this year, and we just got back uh, on Sunday afternoon from San Antonio, and they were competing in a regional uh, regional tournament, getting ready for nationals, which will be in the middle of the month next month. So we're all over the place this time of the year, and we're just glad to be able to be here and be able to take the time and honor Bill and welcome him to the team. So with that being said, there's your hat. And the only one of us that have those hats, and they actually made them wrong because the hats are missing something on them, so we'll get you another one. But um, those hats, are these are our team hats, and then he's got his team shooting vest. UA Costa team shooting vest. <clears throat> and his shooting shirt itself, uh, all in all. So we're happy to have welcome Bill aboard. Bill, welcome to Colts. 
Thank you, sir. We definitely hate to take him away from y'all, but he's got to go somewhere. He don't have to go home, but he can't stay here after May. So. Oh, no, not right now. <laughs> Man. Yes. Woo. Oh, my goodness. I'm excited, guys. This is awesome. Thanks to everybody for everything. I was going to say a few things as well. I wanted to welcome y'all all here today. Um, so some of Bill's accomplishments. Um, he's been in since the sixth grade, correct? Yeah. So he's been shooting since the sixth grade. Um, he's got a lot of top shot awards. Um, he's got first, second, and third place as his squad award. Um, he's been featured in the champion of champion shootouts at our state competitions. Um, he's actually awarded the MVP of our team a few years ago. Um, he is the double Truman champion in his class at Brand, and then Arkansas All-State team for ATA. Um, his most memorable moment, he told me this earlier, um, was whenever he shot his 75 straight. So his first 25, it was a 22 out of 25. And Bill, if we know Bill, he's going to try to get in his head. But his next three rounds, he shot 25 out of 25, so making that his 75 straight. Um, his quote, um, being down doesn't mean that you're out. It means that, you do, that what you do right now is the only thing that matters. So that's Bill's mantra, and that's what he's going to kind of say for y'all. There we go. All right. <laughs> For those of you who do competitive shooting or have an idea of competitive shooting, when you set up in baseball, if you miss a swing or you miss a shot in basketball or you, you stumble and you fall at the one-yard line in football, the game's not over. Shooting sports-wise, you make a mistake, it very well can be and very often is. It's a game of perfection. It's a game of doing it right every time. And doing it in front of everybody when everybody can see you make a mistake. And it's very, very obvious. You couldn't put it up there in a bigger neon sign. You just missed. To hold it together when you're doing that and you know what's on the line, it takes a special set of character, it takes integrity, and it takes strength. Because you're putting yourself in a position where you can and will fail. It's not if you fail, you're going to miss. Nobody's straight. Nobody has ever been straight. There's only about five people in a championship series in ATA that have ever gone four by 400. And that means you broke every target in the 400 of the championship. It's a very small number. To run a straight means that basically 100 times you did everything perfectly and somewhere in that 100 you got lucky. Because there's things that happen. You can do it 100% right and a puff of wind at the wrong point in time pushes that target. And it takes guts to be able to face that day in and day out. And it's something that you've either got it or you don't. The competitive factor in competitive shotgun shooting is very, very high. And we're glad, glad that Bill has developed that. We thank you for helping Bill develop that as he's come along. And we're going to try to refine that a little bit more so that we can get rid of that 75 straight and we can get 100 straight. Amen. <laughs> Amen.
I'm Barbara Dixon and this is Anna Belcher and we're with Southern Bancor Bank. Southern is a different kind of bank. Um, we are a designated community development financial institution and our main focus, our mission is to be involved in and serve the community. And um, what makes us different is we offer traditional banking services, but we also offer other services um, that help strengthen our community to teach them financial literacy and to help them um, to build credit, understand credit, and to uh, make good, wise choices. Some of the programs we offer, we have a learning center that covers everything from savings to loans to small business, housing. There's also a section of that uh, website that is designated for youth that's broken up by age groups so you can get um, financial literacy information for your children on that website. There's a section for senior citizens as well. Um, we also offer free credit review. We will help you pull your free credit report, go over it with you, give you the resources to review it and to know what to look for. We offer a credit builder CD loan to help you start building credit history or to improve your credit history. We also offer free counseling services, whether you wanna just do a budget or just ask questions, uh, that service is free and it's all free to customers and non-customers alike. We offer free home ownership counseling services. We offer free income tax preparation through the VITA program. It's a voluntary income tax preparation assistance program. And for consumers who qualify, we prepare their taxes free. We will be doing that right here in the Locksburg branch. A lot of what uh, Southern does is they try to strengthen the community, it, the businesses and individuals a lot. And we are considered our, one of our models is to be wealth builders for everyone. And one of the primary ways we start that is by teaching savings habits. And Anna is going to tell you a little bit about some of those. We have a few savings products that's going on right now. One is our Roundup Savings. Every time you use your debit card, you can either round up to the next dollar amount or you can round up a, a certain dollar, whether it's one or five, just whatever is convenient for you. And we also have what is called an app that you can download and the app is called Envy. And it is a savings game. It's a hundred days process and you determine how much you want to save in 100 days and every day that you go into the app you open the envelope and it may transfer a dollar it may transfer two dollars whatever is in that envelope on that app that day is how much it transfers your savings account we also have what we call a CD credit builder loan if you are just starting out and getting credit or you've just graduated from school and you're having a hard time uh, getting credit because you have no credit score or even if you've had past uh, negative credit, then you can come in and we can start you out with credit of, of a CD loan and that also gives you a CD. When you pay your loan off, that CD is your money. And Southern uh, believes in Sevier County. We believe in empowering our community and we are thankful to be here in Sevier County and we look forward to serving Sevier County and the people in this community for years to come. Courtside once again as the UA Casa Lady Colts lead North Arc by a score of 28 to 16. Lauren Hinton courtside tonight as the Lady Colts scored 10 straight in that first quarter, took the lead, and have a nice lead. But this is a good North Arc team. As we said coming in, they're kind of middle of the pack. Actually, at the uh, in second place, tied for second in the pack. Now, SAU Tech undefeated in play, but they're shorter North Arc in second place with four wins, three losses each. QA Casatot needing a win tonight at two and three, and looked pretty good in that first half. We take a look at the personal foul situation. A North Arc with four players with two, including Kaylee Patrick, Kessel Willis, Carson Edwards, and Sydney Standridge, only have seven players on that roster foul situation could be a bigger deal for them than it is for UA Cossetot. Kiana Holly has three three-pointers in the first half, also three personal fouls. As we get set to start the second half, it'll be Samaya Smith getting it in. Inbounds from 
Hannah McLean, they'll work it right side. Kiana Holly, Jerry Cotton's out there, along with Sophia Reyes. Pass underneath. In the hands of Cotton. Cotton gets it right back out again. Cotton in the corner, tries to attack. Let's see. Whistle away from the basketball. And the ball is, is going to be turned over. May have been a three-second lane violation. As the Lady Colts turn it over. 9.40 to play as we're just underway here in this third quarter. Garris has it out there, fronted by McLean. McLean putting pressure on the basketball. They get it out into the hands. Hodges gets it back to Patrick, back over to Hodges. Down low. Lady Pioneers work it to Garris again. Back over. Hodges, three-pointer on the way by Patrick. Will not go at the three-point or at the uh, shot clock buzzer. And the rebound comes off to Samaya Smith. Smith will bring it into the front court. Left side, it goes to McLean. McLean looking, looking, has the ball tipped out of bounds. Defensively getting a hand on it over there was Abby Hodges. McLean will make the pass. Gets it in to Smith. Smith works it right side to Holly. Holly directing traffic. Gets Sophia Reyes in the corner. Reyes looking at the give and go. Instead gets it right back out to Smith for the three. Can't get that one to go. And the rebound. Going high to grab that rebound. That's going to be Carson Edwards. Edwards gets it to head to Hodges. Over, Edwards had to pick that one back out of the sky. Coming the other way, Patrick puts it high off the glass, no good. And coming down with it is McLean, and McLean's going to be fouled. Looks like they're going to call that one on Kaylin Garris. Kaylin called for the personal foul. I think that's her first. Lady Colts have it. Eight and a half to go, third quarter. Looking for our uh, first points of this second half. Lady Colts. Holly has it in the corner. Over to Cotton. Cotton gives it left side. As Smith dribbles inside the arc, puts it up and good. Samaya with a basket. Samaya Smith with 13 points in this ball game, leading score for the Lady Colts. They lead it 30 to 16. Pass underneath, knocked away, picked out of the air by Holly. Kiana at the midcourt stripe, gets it off to Smith. Smith thought about it, instead gets it way out front. To McLean, Hannah will take her spot. Offensively, Lady Colts working up top. They'll get it to Holly out on the right wing, deep in the corner. That's Cotton, or actually that's Cotton up top. To Smith, Smith working, working five seconds on the shot clock. Cotton thought about the three. She'll have to take it on the way, in and out, no good. Rebound comes off to Smith. Samaya puts it up, knocks it down. Samaya Smith in the right place at the right time. 32-16, Lady Colts on top. By 16 points, 7-15 to play, third quarter. Biggest lead of the night for the Lady Colts. Pass down low, tipped around, picked up by McLean. Good defense that time by Holly to tip it away. Coming down court, into the front court is Samaya Smith. Smith works it over to Holly, battling over there with Garris. He'll fire it underneath, quick pass to Reyes, knocked out of bounds, last touch by the Pioneers. 17 on the shot clock, as checking out will be the uh, Abby Hodges for the uh, Pioneers, checking against Kessel Willis. Lady Colts looking underneath for Reyes, and man, tough to get a basket underneath tonight. North Arc doing a good job inside the paint been the perimeter game that's been big for the Lady Colts so far tonight. Going baseline, Edwards fires it back out. Patrick drives inside the lane. Big collision. Reyes called for the blocking foul. Not a popular call amongst the hometown fans. Reyes a little late, late getting to that spot on the court and heading to the free throw line to shoot a couple will be Kaylee Patrick. Patrick, two out of four at the free throw line tonight. She had four points in that first half. Neither team has scored. Well, like actually, uh, the uh, Lady Pioneers have yet to score here in this second half. Patrick's first free throw is on the way off the front of the iron. No good. Patrick had 10 points, or actually 24 points against UA Casatot back in January in Harrison 
That shot's on the way. It won't go. Rebound, Edwards. Oh, nice rebound by Edwards, but she could not get the shot to go from point blank range. Pass back out to Patrick, working in traffic. Gets it back over. Edwards gets it back out to Garris. Her shot is blocked by Reyes. Picked out of the air by Holly. She'll give it to Smith, and Smith will jog it into the front court. Northart going on four minutes here without a basket to start this third quarter. Is that pass out of bounds in the Lady Colts? We'll get back defensively as Reyes is going to come out and Fulbright's going to check back into the lineup. So it's Fulbright, Cotton, Holly, Smith, and McLean in the lineup for the Lady Colts. Up top, that's Kaylee Patrick. Patrick, oh, pass down. Carson Edwards, nice basket that time. Good feed from Sydney Standridge. And that breaks the drought. So we just went under six minute mark here in this third quarter. Lady Colts on top, 32-18. Smith fires it back out. Now they're working left side, three pointer on the way by Holly. In there, Kiana Holly. That's another one. Her fourth three pointer on the night. Lady Colts up top, 35 to 18. North Arc, tax. Patrick fires it back out. Three-pointer on the way, up and in. Shot knocked down by Kessel Willis. Willis with a three. She got six points in the ball game. Lady Colts lead it 35-21. UAC on the attack. That's Fulbright, fires it back out to Holly. To Smith underneath. Fulbright in traffic, needs to get rid of it. Looking for Hannah McLean. Loose ball is gonna be picked up by Willis. They'll bring it the other way. Garris attacks, puts up the one-hander in the lane. Kessel Willis gets the basket. She's got eight points in the ball game, five of them here in the third quarter. Lady Colts have it left side. They lead it 35-23. Left side, Holly can't get it to go. Rebound picked up by McLean, puts it up and in. Hannah McLean with a basket. She's got seven. Lady Colts lead it 37-23. They'll work it left side. Underneath, oh nice drive to the basket, shot a little off balance, loose ball picked up, tied up, and let's see. Possession there points two, the Lady Pioneers. And we've got a timeout on the court. 4.09 to play. Lady Colts on top, 37-23 with 4.09 to play here in this third quarter. Looks like we're going to take a little time out here, so I guess we will too. You're on 888radio.com. New Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay. I'm gonna try it first. Yes. I need to try it first. It looks like they're going to assess a technical foul, and I thought they said 32. And if that's the case, and that's gonna be on Kessa Willis, a technical foul on Willis, and a technical foul on Coriana Fulbright. If that's true, that's going to be the third personal foul or third foul on Kessa Willis. And that'll be the first on Fulbright. Actually going to say that was on Reyes is what they're saying here. That's what's showing up on the clock. Well, maybe they just haven't put it up there yet. Hate to try to explain that, but there's uh, not going to be any shooting on this particular situation here. So it's a double foul. And the Lady Pioneers will have it underneath their own basket. 37-23, 4.09 remaining in this third quarter. Hernandez in the lineup for the Lady Colts. Inbounds pass up top. Patrick puts it up the three, can't get it to go. Rebound, Holly to Smith. Lady Colts on the attack. 
Sierra Shaw has checked back into that lineup for Fulbright. That, that foul a moment ago was indeed on, on Fulbright. And let's see, corner. Apparently, Holly had a foot on that corner, on that uh, sideline. So Lady Colts will turn it over. Lady Pioneers have it trailing 37 23 with 3.45 to play in this third quarter. A lot of basketball to be played here tonight. Long way to go. And of course, we have a men's game following this one. Right side. Sierra's. Or Garris tried to uh, split that double team and a reaching foul on Hernandez. Alexis Hernandez is going to be called for the personal. That's her second. And the Pioneers will put the ball in play in front of their own bench. 3.29 to go, third quarter. Lady Colts up by 14. Pass into Edwards. at Standridge. Lost the handle, picked it right back up. Loose ball, and McLean is going to be called for reaching over. Hannah McLean called with a personal foul. Standridge was there to grab that rebound, try to go back up with it. Before she could get uh, in a position to shoot, she was, uh, she was fouled by McLean. As Patrick will make the inbounds pass, gets it. To Edwards, out front, three-pointer on the way by Garris, won't go, and the rebound comes off to Holly. And let's see. Looks like Sierra Shaw was there to jump on that loose basketball. Possession error points to Lady Colts. 3-10 to play, third quarter. Lady Colts on top, 37-23. Loud atmosphere tonight at the Bank of Oxford Gymnasium. One of the loudest games we've had since we joined the NJCAA. And a whistle and a foul on Kiana Holly. That's going to be her fourth. Fourth personal foul on Kiana Holly. That is a big, big foul. She's hit four three pointers tonight. Lady Colts. Hit uh, what six threes in the first half? They've got seven for the game. Holly will come out as Fulbright's back in the lineup. Garris gets it out to Standridge, backs it back out, facing some pressure up top. 15 seconds on the shot clock. Garris tries to drive through, and ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Garris. Kalen trying to make something happen down low. Hit the court. I, she's okay. They wanted to check on her right quick. And actually, they're going to say that's a personal foul. Is that a foul? She said, oh, that is going to be on uh, Shaw. So we've got a timeout on the court. 2.43 to play. Third quarter, Lady Colts 37, North Arc 23. Back in a moment on NADA Radio. Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. Big crowd tonight here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. On hand to see the Lady Colts take on North Arkansas. Lady Colts lead it 37-23. And heading to the free throw line will be Kaylin Garris. So Garris going to the free throw line after that personal foul on Sierra Shaw. Shaw picked up her second personal foul. And Garris heads to the free throw line. She's got three points in the ball game. That on a three-pointer to start the game. And had been quiet right up until that point. She hits a free throw at the 243 mark of this third quarter. Kalen's second shot's on the way, and it is good. Garris with five. Lady Colts lead cut back to a dozen at 37-25, which was uh, their margin of lead 
at the uh, start of the third quarter. Right side, Samaya Smith fires it back out. Gets it in the hands of Sierra Shaw. Sierra's shot won't go, and the rebound comes off to Standridge. Sydney works it ahead to Abby Hodges. Hodges facing some pressure up top from Jarrett Cotton. Kaylee Patrick gets it back out to Hodges. Shot clock down to 15 as loose ball is going to be picked up by Patrick. They'll fire it down underneath. Back out. Right side. Fall away. Eight footer. No good. Grabbing that rebound from McLean. Hannah gets it off to Samaya Smith, and Smith will work it into the front court. A minute 45 to go in this third quarter. Lady Colts up 37 25. Lady Colts work it underneath. There's Fulbright. Bangs her way inside, puts it up and in, and she's going to the free throw line. Fulbright with a basket. First basket of the night for Fulbright. And she's heading to the free throw line to try to complete that three point play as Jerry Cotton's going to get a breather. Alexis Hernandez back in the lineup. Personal foul is going to be called on Samantha George. That'll be her first at the free throw line. Fulbright shot on the way up and in. Coriana now with four points in the game. Two out of three at the three point line. And Lady Colts back up by 16. Or 15, rather. 40 to 25. Pass tipped back into the hands of Patrick as Hannah Hernandez gets a hand on it again. And is she going to be called for the reaching foul? I think she is. Got a little too physical that time. Hernandez had a couple of shots at that basketball, but she just picked up her third personal foul. At the free throw line will be Kaylee Patrick. Patrick, two out of five at the charity stripe tonight. Actually, two out of six at the stripe tonight. She'll be shooting. So that one's up and in. Let's have another one coming. That one rattles around and goes in. Patrick now with six points. And the Lady Colts lead at 13, 40 to 27. Smith works it into the hands of Shaw. Sierra fires it underneath, Fulbright. What banks her way inside, can't get the shot to go. There's McLean with a rebound, and she will be fouled. In traffic, let's see here. Let's see, is that on Patrick? I think it's on Kaylee Patrick, that's her third. Lady Colts basketball tonight being brought to you by McDonald's of Southwest Arkansas and by Coca-Cola of Nashville. Hannah McLean at the free throw line, sends it on the way, rattles it around, and knocks it down. McLean with eight tonight. She's three for three at the free throw line. Second shot, and in and out, no good. And the rebound comes off to the Lady Pioneers. Under a minute to play here in this third quarter. They'll work it right side. Give down low into the hands of Standridge. Brings it back out again. Works it to Garris. Kalen has her progress blocked inside the lane. And Patrick tried to go up. Didn't have enough upper arm strength to get that shot to go down. And the rebound comes off the Lady Colts. Coming the other way. 29 seconds on the uh, third quarter. Shot underneath Fulbright. Puts it up and in. Coriana Fulbright. Basket. Good. She's going to the free throw line. That's going to be on George. Samantha George call for her second. And heading to the free throw line. That will be Coriana Fulbright. Fulbright had only one point in the first half. She's got five, make it six here in the second half. And the Lady Colts on top, 44-27 with 26.5 to go in this third quarter shot. Clock is off. Pass tipped away by Hernandez, picked up by, by Patrick. Three-pointer on the way by Garris, no good. Rebound comes off to Hodges. Abby's pass back out to Patrick. Inside the lane. That's going to be a reaching foul on Fulbright, I think. Now they're going to talk it over. They're going to make sure. Let's see. That is going to be on Patrick. I thought they were going to talk it over at first. Well, it might have been a little bit of an anticipation foul right there, but that's the second one on Coriana Fulbright. At the free throw line, Patrick puts it up and in. Kaylee tonight has hit her last three free throws in a row. 
Second shot, in and in there. She's got eight points in the ball game. Lady Colts lead it, 44-29. Five seconds to go in this third quarter. Smith fires up that long three, picked up by Standridge. Smith had a little bit more time than what she thought. We come to the end of the third quarter of play. Our score, Colts 44, Pioneers 29. We're back in a moment here on N88radio.com. I'm, 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 hold on, I'm coming. You didn't tell me you were getting McDonald's. Mix and match the egg McMuffin, sausage McMuffin with egg, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. With any two for just $5, you might realize you're a morning person, too. For your season of life, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. Come home to Farmers Bank. Side. Lady Colts on top, 44-29, as we get set for the fourth quarter of play. Lady Colts on top by 15. They've led since early in that first quarter. The only time they trailed was when it was 3-0 on that opening three-pointer by Kaylin Garris. Lady Colts will have Hernandez, Fulbright, McLean, Shaw, and Burns on the court. On the, uh, on the bench right now is Kiana Holly. He, she hit four three-pointers, but she also has four fouls. Hodges with it. Works it left side. Patrick fires it up from the corner. In there. Three-pointer up and in by Kaylee Patrick. That's only the second three-pointer of the night for the Lady Pioneers. Shaw gets it up top to McLean. Gets it right side. Three-pointer on the way by... Shaw or Hernandez can't get it to go and the rebound comes off to Shaw. Shaw gets it in the hands of Burns. Victoria backs it out to the emblem. Left wing, that's Hernandez in the corner to Shaw. Sierra looking down low for McLean and coming out of there with it's Kaylee Patrick. Patrick fires it ahead to Garris. Garris went up high to get that pass. Gets it back underneath the Standridge. Working, working. One hander in the lane up and in. Good piece of work that time by Sydney Standridge. She's got six. Lady Colts lead back down to 10. And stealing the ball, coming the other way with it. That's Garris. Lays it up and in, and she's going to the free throw line. Burns is going to be called for the personal foul. That's her third. Head to the free throw line will be Kaylin Garris. Garris, seven points in the ball game. Have a chance for number eight, and we're going to see Lady Coles makes some substitutions right here. Reyes along with Holly and Cotton and Smith on the in the lineup. Looks like Smith over there picking up uh, some trash out on the court and heading to the free throw line will be Kaylin Garris. Garris is seven points on the evening. And North Arc, just like that, has cut it back to eight. Lady Colts led by as many as 17. Led by 15 at the start of this quarter. Leads back to eight. That's the first time we've seen a single-digit lead on the part of the Lady Colts since that first quarter. Shot on the way, no good. Rebound comes off to McLean. Lady Colts will bring it the other way. Samaya Smith comes across the timeline. Gets it in the hands. Cotton over to Holly. Has to be careful out there with four personal fouls. McLean looking inside to Reyes. Working and a blocking foul going to be called on Edwards. Carson Edwards called for a third personal foul. Reyes heading to the free throw line. Sophia, by the way, looking for her first point of the night. Sophia averaging 12 points a game. One of four Lady Colts averaging in double figures on the season, and that one is off no good. Her first trip to the free throw line. 
She'll have another one coming here as the Lady Colts on top, 44-36, 8.25 to go. Second shot's up and in. Reyes gets that lead back to nine, 45-36. Pioneers have it. Hodges in the corner to Edwards. Lays it up, can't get it to go, but a reaching foul going to be called, and that's going to be on Reyes. Sophia called for her second personal foul. And that will send Edwards to the free throw line. Carson Edwards, two out of four at the free throw line tonight. She has four points in the ball game. That one's up and good. Eight point lead right now for the Lady Colts as Edwards looks to cut it to seven. Second shot, no good. And on the rebound attempt. Ball goes out of bounds. Hannah McLean got tangled up. The ball went out of bounds, last touch by McLean. So the Pioneers get it with a chance to cut into that eight point lead. Shot on the way by Standridge won't go, and the rebound's going to be pulled down by Fulbright. She'll get it in the hands of Smith, and Samaya will bring it the other way. Samaya Smith into the front court with eight minutes to go in this ball game. Pass underneath Fulbright, battling down there. Blocking foul going to be called against Standridge. Sydney Standridge picks up her third, and let's see. Second team foul against North Ark here in this quarter. Pass underneath, looking for Fulbright. Ball stripped away, picked up by Jerry Cotton. Fires it right side, Fulbright goes in again. And a charging foul this time on Fulbright. So Fulbright called for the personal foul, that's her third. And again, North Ark has the basketball and a chance to cut into that lead with seven and a half minutes to play in the game. Garris gets it up top. Hodges has it, Abby fires it back out to Garris. Kaylin shot, long three-pointer, no good. Rebound, fought for, Fulbright has it. She'll get it to Shaw, and Sam Samaya will walk it into the front court. 7.15 to go in the game. Lady Colts on top by eight, 45-37. Right side, and McLean called for the travel. Good defense that time by Edwards. Lady Colts turn it over, 7-10 to go. 45-37, Lady Colts on top. Garris, across the timeline, gets it over to Hodges. Back out to Garris, to Hodges. Abby takes a dribble, or two, or three, fires it back out to Garris. Garris gets it into the hands of Standridge. Back over to Edwards, her shot no good, and the rebound comes off to Samaya Smith who gets rid of it before she travels. Got it in the hands of Fulbright, and Samaya comes the other way with it. 6.35 to play in the game, right side. Lady Colts get it back up top in the hands of Smith, gets inside the arc, can't get that shot to, yes she does! I thought it was coming out of there. Samaya Smith with a basket, that's a big shot right there, Lady Colts. Lead it 47-37. Smith with 17 points in the ball game tonight. Shot on the way by Edwards up and in. Carson with the basket. Carson now with seven points in the ball game. Lady Colts up 47-39. Left side, shot on the way corner. Kiana Holly shot, no good. Rebound comes off to Jared Cotton on the baseline. Dribbling in traffic, gets it right side. Shot on the way from the corner by Samaya Smith. Won't go, and that rebound and they're going to call a whistle and a foul against the Lady Colts. They're going to put that one on McLean as getting that rebound with Sydney Standridge. She would not give it up, and a personal foul is going to be called on Hannah McLean. That'll be her third. Lady Colts have Victoria Burns, Alexis Hernandez, Hannah McLean, and Coriana Fulbright, each with three and uh, four personal fouls on Kiana Holly. Pass. Patrick, intended for Patrick, picked up, however, 
by the Lady Pioneers. Driving into the lane. And we'll see. Looks like Edwards is going to head to the free throw line as she was fouled by Samaya Smith. Smith called for the personal foul. That's her third. Five Lady Colts with three. And one, or one Lady Colt with four. Foul situation for North Ark. Now, they've only got seven players on their, on their roster. They have four players with three and one with two. Looks like we'll do a little uh, housekeeping out here, get the perspiration off the Coca-Cola emblem. 5.33 to go in this one. We have a men's game to follow. Lady Colts lead it, 47-39. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Get one, Ruthman. At the free throw line, Carson Edwards shots in and out, no good. Edwards has had a pattern tonight. Up until that shot, she'd make one, miss one, make one, miss one. Well, she's missed her last two in a row right now. Seven points in the ball game. Shots on the way, it's good. Carson now with eight. Lady Colts lead at seven, 47-40. Samaya Smith. Up top, works it right side, Kiana Holly back out to Smith. Smith facing some pressure out there. They get it back right side. Three-pointer on the way by Smith, can't get it to go. Rebound, Fulbright, lost the handle. Loose ball on the court, goes out of bounds, and it's going to be last touched by the Lady Colts. Pioneers will have it far in, 5.09 to play in the ball game. Lady Colts on top, 47-40. Hodges drives, shoots over the top of Kiana Holly, can't get it to go. There's McLean with another rebound. Gets it to Smith, Samaya, sophomore point guard, gets it ahead. Back out to Holly, to Jared Cotton. Back to Holly. She'll get it in the hands of Smith. Back over to Jarrah. Cotton will give it. Deep in that left corner underneath Fulbright. Goes up. Can't get the shot to go. And the rebound comes off to Kaylee Patrick. Patrick works it around the perimeter. Into the hands of Edwards. Back to Edwards. Puts it up. Can't get it to go. Another missed layup. Both teams have missed some layups tonight. Lady Coles missed several in that first half. Samaya Smith into the front court. We've got a timeout on the court. Our score, Lady Colts 47, North Ark 40, 409 to play. We're back after this from the Eurasia State Bank. Credit cards are great, but have you seen the interest you're paying? I talked to my bank about a debit card. It's smart, it's secure, it's accepted anywhere. It even does double duty as an ATM card. So if you add it all up, a debit card is a better card. Horatio State Bank, a better way to bank. Member FDIC. We're online at HoratioStateBank.com. Our thanks to the UA Gossett College Relations Team for providing the hot dogs tonight. For the Ashdale Elementary School students who are here, our thanks to Rod Smith, UA Cossetow welding instructor, for doing the grilling honors tonight. And my thanks to uh, Erica Buenrosro for bringing me one of those hot dogs. It's pretty doggone good. 4.09 left to go in this game. Lady Colts on top, 47-40. They have the basketball. Samaya Smith out beyond the arc. Lob pass in the corner, looking for Hannah McClain. Comes out of there with it. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Smith will take the three. Does not go. Abby Hodges with a rebound. Hodges fires it down. Taking it all the way. Edwards puts it up and in, and she's going to be fouled by Samaya Smith. That'll be the fourth on Smith. Heading to the free throw line will be Carson Edwards. Edwards with eight points in this second half, 10 in the game, and she'll go to the free throw line to try to cut that Lady Colt lead 
back to four. 47, 42. Edwards. Four out of eight at the free throw line tonight. Make it five out of nine. Is that, that was money in the bank. Lady Colts lead it by a score of 47-43. 3.45 to go. In the corner, that's Holly. Right side to Smith. Smith gets it back out to McLean. She'll take the three. In there! Hannah McLean! Cossetot River. Freshman out of Cossetot River High School. Hannah McLean knocks it down. She's got 10 points in the ball game. Shot up, no good. Sophia Reyes has it on the rebound. And the Lady Colts will bring it the other way. That's a big, big three by Hannah McLean. Deep in the corner. The Lady Colts have it. Back out to McLean. Left side. Holly will take the three. She's hit four. That one no good. And the rebound, Maya Smith can't quite get to it. Ball goes out of bounds with 2.56 to go in this game. It's 47-43 when McLean hit that big three-pointer. Lady Colts back up by seven now, 50 to 43. Pioneers have it. They'll work it out on the wing. Patrick with it, gets it out to Edwards. Lob underneath. Looking, oh, Edwards has it. Carson's gonna be fouled, and that may be on Reyes. It is. Sophia called for her. Is that her, are they saying that's her fifth? It is. Reyes checks out. Reyes, not her typical game tonight, finishes the night with one point. She stayed in foul trouble a good portion of the evening. Never seemed to get that game going at the free throw line. That's Carson Edwards. She's hit three in a row now. And she'll have another shot coming here. 50-44, 2.36 to go in the game. Second shot, Carson Edwards up and in. Lady Colts have it. Leading. 50-45. Samaya Smith with the basketball. At the free throw line, gets it back out to Jared Cotton. Cotton, bounce pass to Smith. Gets it right back to Cotton for the three. Off the iron, no good. Rebound comes off to Carson Edwards. Lady Colts putting pressure in the backcourt. Edwards has it, gets it off to Garris. Kalen on the drive, in the lane, lays it up and in. How did she get through there? Kalen Garris with a basket. And the Lady Colts want a timeout. 2.03 to go in the ball game. Our score, Lady Colts 50, North Ark 47. We're back after this on 888radio.com. No matter your season of life, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. Come home to Farmers Bank. Big crowd, big night here at the Bank of Larksburg Historic Gymnasium. Big game. Lady Colts lead it, 50-47, 2.03 to go in this game. Lady Colts have the basketball after that timeout. Smith, Cotton, Holly, McLean, and Fulbright in the lineup for the Lady Colts. Cotton has it on the perimeter. She'll back it back out. Spin, gives it right back out to Holly. Holly to Samaya Smith. Pulls up free throw line, yes. Samaya looks like she could do that all night long anytime she wants to. So smooth tonight. Lady Colts back up by seven. Three pointer on the way by Garris. No good. Rebound, out of bounds. Lady Colts get it back. 52-47, Lady Colts. Saw that lead get down to three. It's back up to five with a minute 20 to go in this game. That's a lot of time. Smith with it. Lost the handle. 
Gets it back over to McLean. McLean. Pass goes out of bounds, last touch by the Lady Pioneers. And it looks like Garris is down on the court. Kalen Garris, they're taking a shot to the nose here. Been a physical game tonight. And again, North Ark comes in over only seven players on that roster. And looks like Garris is gonna come out. Hodges will check back in. Abby Hodges in for Kalen Garris. A minute 12 to go. Lady Colts will have it with 16 to go on the shot clock. 52-47. Big game for both of these teams. Inbounds pass gonna have to be chased down in it by Jared Cotton in the backcourt. Has to get across that midcourt stripe, she does. Almost stripped from behind, takes it all the way to the court and she will be fouled on the shot. Personal foul will be called against against the uh, Carson Edwards. Edwards picks up her fourth personal foul. That coming with 101 to go in the game. At the free throw line, Jerry Cotton. Couple of big free throws coming up right here. Jerry Cotton fan club always sits right to our right and I know they're on pins and needles. As that one is up, it won't go. Cotton, two points in the ball game tonight. This is only her second free throw attempt of the evening. Shots on the way, off no good, and the rebound comes off to the Lady Pioneers. Abby, pa or, uh, Abby Hodges works it deep in that left corner. Scramble for a loose ball in the corner, and a couple of players on the court going after that loose ball, and let's see. Possession error, points to Lady Colts. They get it back. So we'll do a little bit of court maintenance right here. Get some of that perspiration up. Lady Colts will have it on the far end. And the outlet pass, Kiana Holly takes it all the way, lays it off the glass and good. That's a big, big basket right there. Holly. As the Pioneers fire up the three, that's Patrick off the iron, no good. Rebound, comes off to Hodges, pass underneath. Shot put up. Loose ball gonna be picked up by Smith. 25 seconds to go and she's gonna be fouled by Kessa Willis. Kessa picks up her fourth. That's only the fourth team foul in this fourth quarter on North Park. Lady Colts will have it on the far end. 26 seconds to go in the game. Lady Colts on top, 54-47. Inbounds pass. Cotton in the backcourt. Cotton working and she's gonna be fouled. That will be on Kessa Willis, that'll be her fifth. Willis checks out, finishes the night with eight points. Hit a three-pointer, three out of four at the free throw line, and she'll come out of the game. And heading to the free throw line will be Jera Cotton. Cotton will shoot a couple right here. Lady Colts on top, 54-47. If she can knock these down, it's gonna be really hard for the Lady Pioneers to come back from that. Lady Colts looking for their third conference win of the season. Can't get that one to go. This basketball team right here, Lady Colts, shoots 70% from the free throw line on the season. Cotton's 0 for 3 tonight. Make it one out of four. That's a big one right there. 54, 47, Lady Colts on top by, what? We'll stop. What do we got here? I think we're gonna put some time, up. did we not start the clock? Did we start the clock too soon? What did we do? They're gonna say put 24 on the clock? Yeah, 22.4 on the clock, okay. So. Lady Pioneers, Garris back in that lineup. Fires it left side. Hodges fires it back out. Pass stolen away by Jerry Cotton. She'll take it all away. 
and the ball stripped away on the other end. Garris comes away with it. Nine seconds to go in the game. Garris fires it across the lane to Hodges. Her shot's up and in, coming with 4.1 to go in this ball game. Hodges coming the other way, laid it off the glass. Again, that's her first two points tonight. We got a timeout on the court. Our score, Lady Colts 55, North Arc 49, four seconds to go. We're back after this from McDonald's. <laughs> I'm, 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 hold on, I'm coming. You didn't tell me you were getting McDonald's. Mix and match the egg McMuffin, sausage McMuffin with egg, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. With any two for just $5, you might realize you're a morning person, too. Four seconds left in this one. Lady Colts on top, 55-49. Lady Colts 8-3 on the season at home. Eight of their ten wins have been on this court. Trying to make it number nine right here. Samaya Smith will make the inbounds pass. Had to feel like home court advantage had been big tonight. Our thanks to Ashdown Elementary for coming up and joining us this evening. It's been a fun night. And we're just getting started. Got a men's game coming up here in a few minutes. As we have a timeout on the court. You're going to take a timeout? I'm going to take a timeout. Back after this from Coca-Cola. New Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay. I'm gonna try it first. Yes. I need to try it first. Lady Colts will have it on the inbounds pass. Pass underneath. M McLean has it, turn around, shot off the glass and good and that'll do it. Lady Colts win it. Final score. Lady Colts, 57, North Arc, 49. We're back in a moment to wrap this one up right after this on N88Radio.com. Casatot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including T-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. Final score, Lady Colts win it tonight, 57-49. As the Lady Colts were led, well, they actually led throughout this ball game, although after leading by 17 points at one point in that third quarter, that lead got down to three, actually down, uh, yeah, at three at 50-47. to 47. And from that point on, Lady Colts outscored North Arc 7-2. to two and come away with their third victory, conference victory of the season, evening their record at three and three in conference play, while North Arc falls to four and four in conference play. Lady Colts were led tonight by Samaya Smith. 11 points in that first half, eight in the second, 19 points in the ball game, including a couple of three pointers. 14 points tonight for Kiana Holly. She wound up the night with 14 points, including four three pointers. 13 points on the evening for Hannah McLean, including a big three-pointer when uh, North Arc had cut that lead down to six, actually to five, and then she hit a three-pointer to make it an eight-point lead there in that fourth quarter. Wound up with 13 points tonight. Seven points on the evening for Coriana Fulbright. She got six of those in the second half. Lady Colts needed every one of them. 
Three points in the ball game for Jarrah Cotton. One point tonight for Sophia Reyes. For North Park, Pioneers were led by Carson Edwards. She, she finished the night with 13 points, 11 of those in the second half. 11 points tonight for Kaylee Patrick, nine for Kaylin Garris, eight for Kessel Willis. Looks like six points this evening for Sydney Standridge, and two points on the night for Abby Hodges. Again, that final score. Lady Colts win it by a final score of 57 to 49. Men's game coming up in about 17 minutes. We're gonna take a little break right now and be back with more in a moment here on N88Radio.com. Welcome to the 2024 Arkansas High Razorback National Signing Day. You signed that? My name is Trey Outlaw and I'm the athletic director here. Um, it is a great day to be a Razorback. It's also a great day to be a Reddy, a Bull Weevil, a Sugar Bear, a Mule Rider, a Colt, and a Cowboy. We want to start off by thanking Dr. Kessler and Mr. Taylor, our superintendent and assistant superintendent for making athletics a priority at Arkansas High. Athletics is not everything in education, but it is the front porch. It's the first thing people see when they visit your school. From our facilities to the, to the success that we have on the playing field, athletics is an avenue for our young people to gain life skills that are important to their future. These, uh, these lessons that they learn, they're very valuable. They teach them how to be successful fathers, wives, husbands, mothers, but most importantly, it teaches them how to be successful citizens. It teaches them whenever the things, whenever things in life get going and it's hard, they learn how to overcome. They learn how to have great character. They learn how to persevere. They learn what it takes to be successful. All of these things are learned at Arkansas High through the Avenue of Athletics. Arkansas High is also a place that dreams come true. Today we have nine Razorbacks that get to see their dreams come, come true. They have shown that Arkansas High is a place where the possibilities are endless. It's a place where you don't need to cross the state line or go to another school to be able to further your education or play at the next level. Through all of their hard work, their tremendous uh, academic success, they have laid a pathway for their teammates to look at, at, at them and look at the future and what it can hold. So we are forever thankful for these young men and young women on showing that the possibilities that they hire means. Again, it's a great day to be a Razorback. I'd like to introduce Mr. Taylor, our assistant superintendent, come and uh, Say a couple words of encouragement to our guys. Thank you. Hey, listen, this is an exciting day for Arkansas High School, for Texas and Arkansas School District, because not only are we showcasing student athletes, but we're also showcasing what Arkansas High has become. It has become a breeding ground for colleges and universities to come and see that there's great talent here at Arkansas High School. And so what these young individuals have done today, they're bridging the gap. You all that are sitting in the stands, one day you all just want to strive to be sitting where they are sitting here today. I want to congratulate them. I want to congratulate their parents. I want to congratulate their parents, grandparents, and their families. I also want to congratulate the coaches. The coaches have done a tremendous job, especially starting with Coach Trey Outlaw, to make sure that these students get the recognition that they deserve and become the young leaders of the future. So I want to say congratulations and thank you for being here and congratulations to all of our honorees on today. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Tim Elon, the track coach. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. This is going to be a first for us because I have to say the club team was always very considered a club. We're not part of the course curriculum. And I'll bring a second friend by herself while I ever see is going to be the first 
Good morning, everybody. Again, we're here this morning. This is our first signing of the 2024-2025 academic year, and we are here with Ms. Aubrey, and she's going to be shooting with us next year, coming next fall, and she, we're looking forward to it. We're going to be real excited about having Aubrey come on board and be a part of the UA Costot Colt. She's a very accomplished high school shooter, and we're looking forward to what she's going to be able to do going forward into the collegiate realm. She's going to be working, what is it, physical therapy? What? Uh, PTA. PTA. She's going to be working on a PTA degree, as well as growing and becoming a better shooter along the line. And we, we can't be more grateful for Miss Aubrey. I met Miss Aubrey two years ago at the uh, Arkansas State High School shoot and started talking to her about our program and what we were doing then. And it's come a long way. Aubrey's come a long way as a shooter, and we're just really looking forward to where we're going to go from there. I'm Barbara Dixon and this is Anna Belcher and we're with Southern Bancor Bank. Southern is a different kind of bank. Um, we are a designated community development financial institution and our main focus, our mission is to be involved in and serve the community. And um, what makes us different is we offer traditional banking services, but we also offer other services um, that help strengthen our community to teach them financial literacy and to help them um, to build credit, understand credit, and to uh, make good, wise choices. Some of the programs we offer, we have a learning center that covers everything from savings to loans to small business, housing. There's also a section of that uh, website that is designated for youth that's broken up by age groups so you can get um, financial literacy information for your children on that website. There's a section for senior citizens as well. Um, we also offer free credit review. We will help you pull your free credit report, go over it with you, give you the resources to review it and to know what to look for. We offer a credit builder CD loan to help you start building credit history or to improve your credit history. We also offer free counseling services, whether you want to just do a budget or just ask questions, uh, that service is free and it's all free to customers and non-customers alike. We offer free home ownership counseling services. We offer free income tax preparation through the VITA program. It's a voluntary income tax preparation assistance program. And for consumers who qualify, we prepare their taxes free. We will be doing that right here in the Locksburg branch. A lot of what uh, Southern does is they try to strengthen the community, it, the businesses and individuals alike. And we are considered our, one of our models is to be wealth builders for everyone. And one of the primary ways we start that is by teaching savings habits. And Anna is going to tell you a little bit about some of those. 
We have a few savings products that's going on right now. One is our roundup savings. Every time you use your debit card, you can either round up to the next dollar amount or you can round up a, a certain dollar, whether it's one or five, just whatever is convenient for you. And we also have what is called an app that you can download and the app is called Envy. And it is a savings game. It's a hundred days process and you determine how much you want to save in 100 days and every day that you go into the app you open the envelope and it may transfer a dollar it may transfer two dollars whatever is in that envelope on that app that day is how much it transfers your savings account we also have what we call a CD credit builder loan if you are just starting out and getting credit or you've just graduated from school and you're having a hard time uh, getting credit because you have no credit score or even if you've had past uh, negative credit, then you can come in and we can start you out with credit of, of a CD loan and that also gives you a CD. When you pay your loan off, that CD is your money. And Southern uh, believes in Sevier County. We believe in empowering our community and we are thankful to be here in Sevier County and we look forward to serving Sevier County and the people in this community for years to come. Once again, here at the Bank of Larksburg Gymnasium, and in between the men's and the women's game, well, let me run the camera for a minute here. Take a look at that crowd. Kids having a great time tonight. Always a fun night when the Ashdown Elementary students come join us. They do it every season. Last couple of years, they've been a lot of fun. And. We got a pretty good home crowd over here tonight as well. Our usual, even larger than usual. Got a few folks from uh, Harrison coming down as well. So, been a good night. It's always better when you win, right? That will set the stage for this uh, men's game. As these two teams got together back in January 18th, up in Harrison, that game went the way of the Pioneers as they came away, let me find my uh, notes here, as they came away with a victory. Let's see, I guess that was what? 92-77. That night, there were uh, three Pioneers finished with 15 points. Five players in double figures, led by Jordan Turner, Matt Jones, and Javon Calmes, each with 15. Turner was four of seven from three-point land, and the team hit 10 of 21 from beyond the arc that night. That's big. Colts, on the other hand, only had a couple of players in double figures. As uh, Kevon Wally, Kevon Wally led the way with. Uh, 29 points. He was 9 of 18 for the field that night, including 4 of 6 in three-point land. Q has been a, um, a bright spot on this basketball team for the two years he's been here. He's a good one. Meanwhile, Zion Harper had 12 points for the Colts as they fell 92-77. Now, North Arc, 4-4 four four in conference play, and they're uh, currently in fourth place in the conference. National Park, of course, number one team, not just in our conference, but the number one team in all of NJCAA Division II. They're undefeated in conference, 8-0, and followed by SAU Tech at 6-2. and South Arc is at 4-3. and North Arc at 4-4. Four and four. And there's UA Cossetot at 3-4. and four. Now, the Colts have won their last two conference games in a row. And um, they did something... Well, they beat Shorter College the other night. And then last week, they did something they've never done in the history of this program, and that's go into ASU Mid-South and win. Colts are now three and four in conference play and uh, currently in fifth place. North Arks in fourth, UA Constantine in fifth. And let's see here, as far as North Ark is concerned, they're number three in the country in rebound margin, number five in total rebounds. They average six block shots per game. 
That's good enough for sixth in the U.S. Seventh in the country in assists, averaging 21 assists per game. And they're fourth in the country in home attendance. So they're used to a loud crowd, and that's what we have tonight. As the Colts get set to take on North Arc in a conference matchup here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. We'll be back to set the stage for this second game in a moment here on N88Radio.com. <laughs> I'm, 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 hold on, I'm coming. You didn't tell me you were getting McDonald's. Mix and match the egg McMuffin, sausage McMuffin with egg, or bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit. With any two for just $5, you might realize you're a morning person, too. Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. Walk into the Coca-Cola facility in Nashville. You get a taste of Southwest Arkansas history from the past 100 years. The Wilson family bottled their very first Coke in Nashville back in 1911, and the rest is history. The office in Nashville offers an outstanding museum of Coca-Cola memorabilia, and it's open free to the public weekdays from 8 till 4. The Nashville Coca-Cola Distribution Center employs 20 people and serves several counties in southwest Arkansas with a complete assortment of Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper products. The Wilson family is known for their generosity in our community, and they're thankful to Southwest Arkansas for your support over the past century. And the Colts are thankful to Coca-Cola for everything they do for UA Casita. And that down to John. We're getting set for the starting lineups with PA announcer John Bunyard here on NADARadio.com.
you have it starting lineups. Electric atmosphere tonight. I'm going to tell you right now, this has been a, uh, the loudest game we have had in this gymnasium since we started this basketball program a few years back. It's only fitting North Ark is here. They've got a good program up there. And in the jump circle, start this ball game for the Colts. It'll be Zion Harper, and he'll be facing off with Javon Calmes. Opening tip is controlled by the Pioneers. Picking it up in the backcourt and bringing it up to the line. And across the line is Jerian Allen. Allen, lob pass way over on the other side. James Parlow Jr. chased it down. Loose ball underneath is going to be picked up by Terry Gupton. Gupton grabs a loose ball. They'll work it down. Zion Harper. Oh, nice give underneath. Kahori Loggins with a finish. Harper to Loggins. What a pass. Loggins gets the basket. Zion with the assist. Colts. And we've got a moving screen going to be set. Blocking foul up here on the screen. No, wait a minute. Somebody got hit underneath. Let's see. Kahari Loggins took a shot to the head. Banged his head into something over here. And it looks like Loggins may have to come out for a moment here. Let's see. May have been some blood in the uniform. And uh, as a matter of fact, looks like uh, Dylan Glover almost came in with his uh, warm-up shirt on. So Glover's in the lineup replacing Gahari Loggins. Pass up top in the hands of Carson Tangness. They get it off to Allen. Right side. Lob pass underneath. Loose ball going to be picked up by Harper. He get it in the hands of Kayvon Wally. Q drives it all the way and lays it up and in. Wally, as we said, had 29 against them the first time they played. Collision down low. Colts getting after it defensively, driving through, scooping it up off the glass. No good, but a whistle and a foul. A lot of extension that time on the drive. Ryan Allen to the free throw line. And looking to see who called the foul on. Allen's going to go to the charity stripe, shoot a pair. Shots on the way, and it's good. Allen with one. And North Ark breaks the ice, trying to see who that foul was on. Okay, they're working on it here. They want to get it up on the scoreboard here. They want to talk it over, make sure they got this foul correct. And the foul was on. Let's see. Still don't have it. They can't get the foul up on the scoreboard. Looks like we're going to have to have a take a little technical timeout right here. Reset that scoreboard to where we can actually get the players into the uh, feed here on the scoreboard. So while they take a timeout, we'll take one, two. Our score, Colts four, North Ark one, back in a moment here on N88 Radio. Now, if it's an outage, you should report it to Swepco using their mobile app. But if you're looking to replace your light bulbs, I have an idea. You should consider changing to LED bulbs. They use at least 75% less energy than traditional bulbs, which means saving you a lot of money. They can also last at least 25 times longer and emit very little heat. You can also get LED bulbs that change color, are remote controlled, and they can even play music. They'll even drive your kids to summer camp. So what are you waiting for? Twitch to LED bulbs today. Well, we're back to action here. Looks like they've got the scoreboard taken care of. That personal foul, by the way, was on the Colts. 
Zion Harper, that's his first at the free throw line. Allen knocked it down, the Colts have it, facing pressure in the backcourt. Gupton gets it ahead to Kevon Wally. All the way, Gupton to the basket, lays it up and in. Terry Gupton out of Garden puts it up and in. Gupton gets his first two of the night. Colts on top, 6-2. At the free throw line, Allen shot, rattles out, no good. Rebound comes off to Gupton. Gupton on the attack, gets it ahead to Kevon Wally. Q, out beyond the arc, pulls it up. He'll set the offense now. Works it left side, bounce pass underneath. Harper banging away under there, has a shot rejected. Loose ball is going to be picked up by the Pioneers. They'll bring it the other way. Long three-pointer in and out, no good. Harper's there with another rebound. Long pass down court into the hands of Kahari. Loggins had to scoop it up, couldn't get it to go. Loggins with a Band-Aid on, uh, on that left cheek. 6-2, Colts on top by four, shot on the way, in and out, in and out, and in there. Allen knocks it down, he's got four. Colts lead it 6-4. Wally walks it into the front court. And we'll get back left side to Gupton. Terry. Gets it back over to Q. To Gupton, bounce pass to Harper at the free throw line. Off to Wally. Wally puts it up. Knocks it down. Cuban Wally with a basket. He's got four. Colts on top. 8-4. Pass on that right side. Into the hands. Aparlo. Colts bring it the other way. Wally has the ball tipped away momentarily. Picks it right back up. Off the dribble. Oh, nice give underneath the Loggins. Makes a little room. Lays it off the glass and good. Loggins isn't the tallest guy underneath, you'll find. But he uses that body well. Pass inside. Shot no good. Getting his own rebound. Battling underneath. And I think Loggins is going to be called for the foul from behind. As Matt Jones was working down there. And uh, it's going to be fouled from behind. That's going to be on Loggins. So Loggins going to be called for his first personal foul. And at the free throw line will be Matt Jones. Matt's shot on the way. It's good. 10-5, Colts on top. Jones will have another one coming here. Checking in the lineup for North Ark will be Jordan Turner. Jones, second shot in there. North Ark, four out of four at the free throw line. Colts lead it by four, 10-6. Pass down court. Pass intended for Gupton. Pitt tipped out of bounds off of Gupton. I believe that was Jones. Got a hand on it down there. Was able to deflect the ball off of Gupton. The ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by the Colts. Allen will bring it into the front court. Bounce pass, left side, Jones has it. Working baseline. Oh, nice give underneath, shot off the glass and good. Jones with the assist, with a basket. That's Curtis Fowler. Two point lead for the Colts, 10-8. And driving all the way is Wally. Q shot is good. Yuvon Wally with another basket, he's got six. Pioneers have it, left wing. A pull up from 14, shot no good. The rebound is going to be pulled down by the Colts. Nick Moye. Moye on the run. He's going to back it back out. Into the hands of Wally. Q up top. Give to Harper. Harper lob underneath. Loggins lays it up and in. Harper set the screen. Pioneers came from each side of him. And Loggins was all alone back there. Colts have it, bringing it the other way. Wally drives the baseline, gives it off to Loggins again. Kahari Loggins, eight points. Wow, Colts jump out to a 16-8 lead with 14.58 to go in the first half. 
We're back in a moment on NADARadio.com. Joey Casatot, physical therapist assistant and occupational therapy assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Casatot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Casatot, your career starts here. Colts lead it, 16 to eight. Pioneers will have the basketball after that timeout. Colts have Dylan Glover along with Nick Moye, Kahari Loggins, Kevon Wally, and Zion Harper in the lineup. Here come the Pioneers. Pass behind everybody and out of bounds. Gonna be last touch by the Pioneers. I believe that was uh, James Parlow. The pass back, and the player had vacated that position. The ball goes out of bounds. Colts get it back after that turnover with an opportunity to take a double digit lead right here. Pass underneath, that's Harper. Has a shot blocked from behind, but there's Loggins. His shot no good. And the rebound's gonna be pulled down by Trey Pulford. Fast stolen away by Glover. <laughs> I was a little undecided on that steal there, but uh, Glover came out of there with it. Gets it in the hands of Wally. Q across the timeline. Attacks. Oh, nice give. Kahari Loggins. They're forgetting all about Kahari, and he's got 10. Nice pass that time by Q. 10-point lead for the Colts. Three-pointer on the way. No good. With a rebound. That's Moye. Nick gets it ahead. All the way down. They're looking for Glover, actually they weren't, they were looking for Loggins, but Glover was able to come out of there with it, save the play, pulls up inside the arc, no good, and Harper may be called for a personal foul here. No, it was not Harper, that's actually gonna be on Kahari Loggins, that's his second. Loggins has got 10 points in this ball game. 18-8, Colts on top by 10, Loggins, Maybe coming out right here. If they can get a replacement in, they do. And checking in in his place will be Timon Proby out of DeKalb, Texas. Under 14 minutes to play, first half. Colts on top by 10, 18-8. Pass underneath. Tipped away by Proby. Picked up by Glover. Dylan drives. Gets it back out front. Moye for three. In there! Nick Moye burns it from the outside. His first points of the night, first three of the evening for the Colts. They lead it 21 to eight. Pass underneath, shot no good. Rebound, comes off to the Colts. Demage Hampton in the lineup for the Colts right now. Out to Wally, looking for Hampton inside. And the ball pass is gonna be stolen away by the Pioneers. They'll bring it quickly the other way. That's Payne with it. Shot put up inside the free throw circle, no good. Dimaje Hampton with a rebound. He'll get it to Wally. And the Colts bring it across the timeline. Just under 13 minutes to go first half. Colts on top, 21 to eight. Lob pass right side, that's Glover. Long, well I thought that's gonna be the three by Glover. Shot no good, rebound. Underneath Proby went for the slam. Dimaje Hampton there to grab it and tip it in. Hampton with the basket. And it's a timeout on the court. Our score, Colts 23, North Arcade. Back in a moment on NADARadio.com. Hey, Ratchets, look, I'm you. <laughs> Jake from State Farm. You couldn't find a standard that looked anything like me? Have you seen mine? It's like looking in a mirror, right? Now that one makes sense. Look guys, I don't even have a stand in. Of course you do. Hold on, is that Drake? That's right, Drake from State Farm. Like, like a, a good, good neighbor. neighbor. Like, like a, a good neighbor. neighbor. Stand-ins don't have lines. Oh, okay. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In Dequane, your State Farm insurance agent is Luke Billingsley at 870-642-2157. Colts lead it, 23 to eight. 
UA Costat Colts basketball tonight being brought to you by Pilgrims. By our good friends at AEP Swepco. And by Farmers Bank and Trust. Colts on top, 23 to 8, 12.33 to play first half. Kahari Loggins with 10 points in this ball game. He's also got a couple of fouls. He's on the bench right now. Hampton, Proby, Glover, along with Moye, and also checking in the lineup right now for the Colts is Edwin Aquino. The pass to Allen passes it outside. Shot left side on the way. No good. Rebound. Apparently going to be tipped out of bounds by one of the Colts. Pioneers will put the ball in play. Underneath, Matt Jones trying to spin, fall away, no good. Rebound, Aquino with a rebound. Edwin comes the other way with it. Aquino across the timeline. Bounce pass, right side, now get it back to Aquino. Into the hands of Proby. Actually, that's Moye over there. Aquino will take the three. Aquino can't get it to go. Rebound. Demarge Hampton puts it right back up and in. Hampton with a couple of garbage baskets. And the Colts on top, 24 to 8. Allen works into the lane, drives through, puts it up, can't get it to go, but he will be fouled. Personal foul is going to be on Aquino. Edwin called for the personal foul. And going to the free throw line will be Isaiah Payne. No, I'm sorry, that's not Payne, that's Allen. Ryan Allen at the free throw line. He'll shoot a couple here. 25-8, Colts on top. Shot on the way, rattles around and goes down. Make it 11, make it 25-9. Uh, Payne will shoot another one here. Second shot's on the way, and it is off no good. And that rebound is going to be chased down in the backcourt. Allen has it. And we're get right side. Into the hands of Parlow. Underneath the uh, shot, hit the top of the glass. Colts still have it. Aquino wants to run. Finds a little bit of lane on that left side. Fires it back right side. Three-pointer on the way. In there! Nick Moye buries the three. His second of the night. Colts on top, 28 to nine. North Arc, right side. 14-footer. Nice soft touch on that one. That's Javon Calvies. Calvies. Who did that? Pass stolen away by Proby. Proby goes all the way. Oh! Missed the slam. Colts have it. Driving inside. Moye is going to be fouled. Colts on top. 31 9 after that three point by Glover. We've got a timeout on the court. Our score. Colts 31, North Arc 9, 10, 27 to go. We're back after this from AEP Sweat. Look at where we are. Think of what we can do. What we're building together is special. And at Southwestern Electric Power Company, we know it's only the beginning. We can do more to improve our communities, our lives. We can reimagine how we use power and where that power comes from. We believe every person, no matter how unique, makes us stronger. By working together, the energy to accomplish our dreams is boundless. Colts on top by a score of 31 to 11. 20 point lead for the Colts. Got off to a fast start tonight. When you play a good ball team, you need to do that. Colts have hit. Uh, well, the, the big the big guy so far has been Kahari Loggins with 10 points in the ball game, and getting uh, everybody's looking for him down low. Colts have also hit three three pointers, two by Nick Moyer and one by Dylan Glover just a moment ago at the free throw line. 
That is Moye. First shot's good. He's got seven points in the ball game. Nick will have another one coming here. That one's off no good, and the rebound comes off to the Pioneers. Ball picked up by Moye. To Aquino, pass. Down low to Damage Hampton in traffic, puts it up and in! Hampton with a basket. He's got six points tonight. Colts on top, 34 to 11. We have to get these Ashdown kids in here every night. Three-pointer all the way up and in. Allen buries the three, he's got seven. 34-14. Colts have it out on the perimeter. They'll get it to Proby. Damone Proby works it left side to Moye. Back out front to Glover. Colts spread it out. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Proby puts it up, can't get it to go. Rebound's going to be pulled down by the Pioneers. They'll bring it quickly the other way. Allen, step back three, in there. Snuggle that one right into the net. Allen buries a three. He's got 10. Colts on top, 34-17. Left side, Glover working on the perimeter. Cross court to Aquino. Aquino thought about the three out to Glover. Glover back to Aquino. Attacks in the corner. Pull up by Moye, no good. Rebound, fought for, out of bounds, last touch by Northard. I believe that was Carson Tangness down low. Ball went out of bounds off of him, and we're gonna see some new faces out there. Fresh faces coming back in. Looks like Dylan Glover will be the only one that stays out there as Kahari Loggins checks back in. Yvonne Wally's in there. Also checking in for the Colts will be Ryan Clemens. And uh, Jordan Reese is in the lineup as well. Wally will make the inbounds pass with 8.48 to go here in this first half. Pass in the corner, three-pointer on the way, off, no good. Wally grabs that rebound, and they're gonna call a charging foul. Indeed. That's gonna be on Ryan Clemens. Clemens put up the three, managed to come away with a rebound, lost the handle on it, and was a little out of control as he tried to chase down that basketball, call for the charge. 34-17, North Ark with a basketball. Eight and a half minutes to play, first half. Matt Jones attacks the basket, puts it high off the glass and good. Kid has always had a good shooting touch. Jones with four. Colts lead back to 15. As North Ark has went on a six point run here, Jordan Reese Works it in the corner, three-pointer on the way by Glover! Dylan Glover buries it. His second three of the night. Colts back on top by 18, 37-19. Matt Jones on the perimeter. Three-pointer on the way, in there! Long shot up and in by Trey Pulford. Pulford with his first points of the night. 37-22, under eight minutes to play, first half. Glover has it. Out to Reese, left side Glover, trying to work against Jones, pull up, can't get it to go, the rebound's gonna be pulled down by the Pioneers, quickly the other way, that's Allen, attacks the basket, lays it up, long extension that time. Looks like Kahari Loggins is favoring that left leg when he came down to give Allen the basket, he's got a dozen, that was a nice play. Kid's got some hops, Reese, Lost the handle momentarily, gets it to Loggins. Loggins trying to get through, and a reaching foul is gonna be called on Trey Pulford. That's his first. Looks like Zion Harper's gonna check in. And Dylan Glover's gonna come out. So you got Harper, Loggins, Reese, Wally. And also in that lineup is uh, Ryan Clements. Clements has it way out front, into the hands. Of Reese, back over to Loggins. Loggins working, and what are they gonna call it? Charging foul. <laughs> Loggins, uh, well, he had my arm. Yeah. That's the third personal foul on Kahari. 
Stan's not crazy about that one. So we'll uh, do some housekeeping out here. Get that perspiration off the Coca-Cola emblem out there mid at the, uh, the free throw lane. Colts into the court. And it looks like we're going to see uh, Kahari Loggins come out of the lineup and checking in for the first time tonight will be Eddie Gonzalez. Eddie, the first seven-footer in the history of this program. Colts on top, 37-24, 7.04 to play first half. Led pretty much from the get-go tonight. Allen has it. Goes around the screen by Jones. Back out to Jones. Jones will take the three. Can't get that one to go. Re going high to tip that rebound was Wally. He gets it to Reese. Q brings it across the timeline. Out to Jordan Reese for three. Jordan shot in there. Took it a minute to come up and go down, but it did. Jordan Reese with a three. Colts hitting from the perimeter tonight. Underneath, working hard under there. Colts come out of there with it. That's Reese. Behind the back, lost a man, lost another one, pulls up inside the lane. In there! Jordan Reese! Showing a little bit of magic. Watch me pull a rabbit out of the hat. Coming the other way, Matt Jones going on the drive. He's going to be fouled from behind by Eddie Gonzalez. Big man call for the personal foul. Jones heads to the free throw line. Matt, two for two at the charity stripe tonight. He's got four points in this ball game. Colts on top, 42 to 24, led by as many as 20. First shot's on the wing, good. Jones with five, 6.18 to go, first half. Jones gets set for his second free throw. Matt Jones sends it on the way, it's good. And the Colts lead it. 42-26, pass right side to Wally. Q gets it back to Reese. Jordan, his, his defender fell back on his backside. Shot put up by Clemens, won't go, and the rebound's gonna be pulled down by the Pioneers. Jones inside the lane, blocking foul on Q. Tried to get set. Jones, very deceptive with that basketball. Faked one way, went the other. And Wally's going to be called for the personal foul. Q called for his first. And at the free throw line will be Matt Jones. He's four for four at the free throw line tonight. Make it four out of five as that one did not go. Six points for Jones. Looks like uh, Gonzalez is going to come out of the lineup. Second shot by Jones is up and in. Colts lead at 15, 42, 27. Just under six minutes to play first half. In the backcourt, that's Reese. Jordan gets it into the front court. Nice pass to Gupton. Gupton gets it out to Moyer. Out to Wally. Harper comes up. Takes the pass, drives inside, puts the one-hander up and in. Nice shot that time on the part of the big guy, Zion Harper. His first two of the night, Colts on top by 17. 44-27, three-pointer from the corner, no good. Wally has it. Colts coming the other way. 5.20 to go in this first half. Three-pointer on the way by Wally, almost, but no, no good. Coming the other way. The Pioneers, they'll fire it way out front. Pass underneath, spin move inside the lane, shot no good. There's Harper, almost had it. Rebound's gonna be finally chased down by the Pioneers. Three-pointer from the left corner, good. Pioneers didn't give up on that play. Shot was put up and in from three-point land by James Parlow Jr. He hits the three, makes it 44-30. Colts on top by 14. Gupton has it, gets it in the hands of Moyer. Moyer looking for Wally, and Wally had already broke for the basket. Colts turn it over. As Reese is going to come out of the lineup, Glover's going to check right back in. Three-point 
Three-pointer on the way, long three-pointer out there by the Jackson family court emblem. Shot is put up and in. Grab that number for you. I believe that's Jordan Turner with the three. Colts have it, they'll work it. Glover gets it to Gupton. Gupton underneath, Harper has it, goes up, puts it up and in. Zion working hard down low, puts it up and in. His, he's got four. Colts up by 13, 46-33. Trey Pulford with it. Pulford gets it back out front. Colts putting pressure on the basketball, 16 on the shot clock. Parlo works it right side in the hands of Pulford. Looking underneath, found the man. Shot put up and in. Shot was put up and in by Jay Graham, his first two of the night. And the Colts work it right side, out on the wing. That's Moye. Moye looking for some motion out there from the offense. Tries to attack, goes inside the lane, puts it up, can't get it to go. Tip up, no good. Rebound, picked up by Terry Gupton. Gupton gets it to Gully. Gully attacks, puts it up with the left hand. He knocks it down. And he's going to the free throw line. Kevon Wally, he's got eight. Tough, tough basket that time. And Wally will head to the free throw line to try to finish the old-fashioned three-point plays. That personal foul is going to be called by Javon Kelmis. His first, Wally. Eight points in this first half. Looking for number nine. Colts on top by 13. Still 13. As that one's no good. And rebounds pulled down by the Pioneers. Coming the other way. They put the shot up. No good. There's Matt Jones with a shot. Couldn't get it to go. And they get it ahead to Gupton. Gupton wants to go all the way. Lays it up high off the glass. As Hampton tried to go up for the slam. And he will be fouled. In the act of shooting. Personal fouls on Curtis Fowler. That's his first. It's only the fourth team foul against the Pioneers tonight at the free throw line for the Colts. Well, the Dimage Hampton shots up and in. Hampton's got seven. 49-35. Colts looking for number 50 right here with 2.53 to go in this first half. Second shot, good. Colts lead it 50 to 35. Allen brings it into the front court, fronted there by Gupton. Terry puts some pressure on the basketball. Long three-pointer, way out front, and the shot is good. Wow, shooter wound up on his back. Carson Tagnus hits the three, and he's fouled by Dimage Hampton. That's his first. So Tagnus has an opportunity for a four-point play. Makes it 50-38. Shots on the way, and it is. It's no good. Rebound picked up by the Pioneers. Loose ball tipped around, tipped around. Magnus comes out of there with it. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound, puts it up and in. Carson Tangness missed the free throw, maybe by design. I don't know. He's got five points on that one possession. Colts lead down to 10, 50 to 40. As Wally goes all the way, can't get the shot to go, and the rebound is going to be picked up by... The Pioneers coming the other way. That's Payne. Shot put up by Jones. No good. Rebound underneath. Reaching foul going to be on Wally. Q is going to be called for the personal foul. That's his second. And heading to the free throw line will be Kelsey Tarver. Kelsey looking for his first points of the night. Colts on top by 10, 50 to 40 with 2.05 to play first half. Shots on the way, and it's no good. Pioneer 7 out of 10 at the free throw line tonight as Aquino checks in the lineup. I think Wally came out. No, Wally's still in there. I'm sorry. 
Aquino. Gupton. Dimaje Hampton. Kevon Wally, and that second shot is good. Also, Timon Proby in the lineup. Aquino working up top, gets it back out front to Proby. Proby tries the three, can't get it to go. Rebound comes off to Matt Jones. They'll fire it ahead. Colts on top by nine. 90 to 41, three-pointer on the way, no good. Aquino tipped it, couldn't come down with it. Pioneers have it. Payne, Allen that is, working out there against Hampton. Matt Jones thought about the three, drives inside, scoops it up, puts it up and in. Upper body strength makes a difference on that one right there. As Matt Jones with a basket. And the Colts lead is down to seven, 50 to 43. Wally has it. Colts get it to Gupton. Gupton attacks, has it stripped out of his hands as he made the drive. Out of bounds, last touched by the Pioneers. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Colts have put it in play underneath their own basket. Wally gets it into Timon Proby. Proby puts it up and in. Made that one look easy. It looked like they forgot about Proby. He made him pay. Coming the other way. That's Jones. Attacks. Gives underneath. One-hander. No. Rebound. Dimaje Hampton. And the Colts will have it with 42 seconds to go in this first half. Aquino. Pass. Almost stolen away. Gupton got it back. Terry gets it over to Aquino. Drives down baseline underneath. Hampton. Looked like he's going to go up for the slam. Hesitated. Kissed it off the glass and good. Dimaje with a basket. Colts up by 11. 54-43. 20 seconds to go in this first half. Shot clock is off. Allen will walk it to the top. Bring it back right side. Out to Matt Jones. Jones attacks. Scoops it up, no good. Colts get the rebound. Coming the other way. Shot at the buzzer, no. And we've come to the end of the first half of play. Wow. Colts lead it, 54-43 at the intermission. We'll be back with some halftime stats for you coming up right after this on 888radio.com. Wade Cossetot Physical Therapist Assistant and Occupational Therapy Assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Cossetot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Cossetot, your career starts here. Look at where we are. Think of what we can do. What we're building together is special. And at Southwestern Electric Power Company, we know it's only the beginning. We can do more to improve our communities, our lives. We can reimagine how we use power and where that power comes from. We believe every person, no matter how unique, makes us stronger. By working together, the energy to accomplish our dreams is boundless. It's halftime here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium with the Colts lead it by a score of 54 to 43. Colts are led in scoring at the half by Kahari Loggins and by Dimaje Hampton, each with 10. Loggins, by the way, on the bench with three personal fouls. Eight points in that first half for Kevon Wally. Two points for Nick Moye, including a couple of three-pointers. Six points for Dylan Glover, including a couple of three-pointers. Jordan Reese has five points, including one three-pointer. And... Looks like four points for Zion Harper, two each for Timon Proby and uh, Terry Gupton. Meanwhile, North Ark led at the half by Orion Allen. He's got 12, nine points in the first half for Matt Jones. Looks like five points tonight for Carson Tangnick. 
three points for George Turner. He had three points. Three points for uh, Trey Polford. Three points for James Carlo. Looks like uh, two points tonight for Jay Graham. Two for Javon Calmese. Two for Curtis Fowler. And one point tonight for Kelsey Tarver. The uh, Pioneers have one, two, three, four, five, six, three pointers hit by five different players. <laughs> That's been a good first half. Colts lead at 54-43. We'll be back with more in a moment here on N88radio.com. Hey, Ratchets, look! I'm you! <laughs> Jake from State Farm. You couldn't find a standard that looked anything like me? Have you seen mine? It's like looking in a mirror, right? Now, that one makes sense. Look, guys, I don't even have a stand-in. Of course you do. Hold on. Is that Drake? That's right. Drake from State Farm. Like, like a, a good, good neighbor. neighbor. Like, like a, a good neighbor. neighbor. Stand-ins don't have lines. Oh, okay. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In Dequane, your State Farm insurance agent is Luke Billingsley at 870-642-2157. Traded uh, from Mexico to the United States when I was six and a half years old. I think I turned seven here. I still remember the day that uh, I came. I came in in a Friday. Uh, my dad had everything squared out. Like he had it all planned out. We went to church that Sunday. It was all English. I had no idea what the priest was talking about. But because I'm Catholic, I know the routines and everything. So I was able to do some of that stuff. Um, and then Monday, here we go to a school. Uh, in Mexico, we went. I went to school with my siblings from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. And then we walked to our school. We carried our little lunch bag. And then we come to a school where we have to get up early. I have to go in this big yellow bus, which I was afraid of. Not only that, but I get car sick. So you can imagine. Uh, I, lots of, I struggled for quite a bit. Um, and then you come to to a school where you can't communicate with your teachers, you can't communicate with your uh, friends. At that time, the Hispanics that we that were at the weak schools at that time were on the same boat that I was. Uh, we really couldn't help each other on the translating or interpreting because they were either just one year ahead of me at the school or just got in like me. So. I do remember myself sleeping through the classroom. The only thing I knew to do was math, which I think that's universal numbers, translate to all languages, I think. So I was able to do math. Other than that, I think I slept through the whole thing because poor teachers, they didn't know how to go about helping me or me communicating with them. So, um, it was a struggle. It was very different, culture shocking. Uh, I learned that we get breakfast in the morning and then we get lunch and then we get to go home. So I wasn't used to that. I was used to carrying my own lunch, whatever I like. And now I'm having to eat this different food, different taste. And it was some difficult times. Um, I could not mingle with my classmates as much because of the language barrier. Once again, we couldn't communicate. So I remember sitting myself back on a bench or somewhere in a corner, just watching everybody do their thing. And here I am crying because I was crying. I was separated from my, from my siblings. They all went to different classrooms, different buildings. And then here I am by myself. And so it, I felt really, really bad, but in the long run, here I am. Uh, I'm a teacher now, and I'm in the ESL program position. So um, how I wanted to be a teacher, or how I got to this place, is I think to be somebody, you, in my opinion, anyway, you are born with something. And in my situation, I feel I was born to be a teacher. 
whether it was in Mexico or here or anywhere, I think I was born to be a teacher. I was born to, to help others. And since I was little and I can remember, everything and all I did was related to education. So um, I worked really, really hard uh, in understanding the language. Uh, once again, back in the day, um, there weren't a lot of resources for the Hispanic kids like me. Um, I had to really learn a lot of stuff and I don't think teachers, colleges knew exactly how to go about with students like me on helping them find what they needed. So I had to do a lot of research and asking around and not i don't think googling at that time i don't remember if we had googled at that time probably did i'm not that old though um but just the struggle to to be where i'm at was not uh, an easy path but i have always said that easy is not always the best if you struggled you value more your your struggle your path and i think i'm at that point um my path to where I'm at right now was not as easy, but I know it's not as hard as others. Um, but thanks to all that, I am where I'm at. Thanks to my parents that brought me here. At that time, when I was six and a half years old, I did not understand why I had to leave everything behind, family, home, everything, school, everything and come to a place where I had no idea what it was about. To me, it was like moving from Earth to another planet. Uh, so I resented my parents for a good long four years, I think, because I felt they brought me without asking, um, without giving us a heads up of what's going to happen, or if they did, I was so little, I don't, I do not remember. Um, but now I thank them, I thank them for what they did because uh, now at my hometown, it's probably not the best place to be right now because of all the stuff going around. But I feel safe in this country. I feel uh, free and I feel independent. Um, all the struggles that I went through are worth it because now I can uh, value all that struggle and do what I want to do, which is to be a teacher, to work with kids, to work with the community. Now I am bilingual and I can use those skills to help others. My kids, adults, whoever needs me, I'm there to help. So um, I value all of that stuff. And once again, how I got here, I think I always wanted to be a teacher and I worked hard for that. It wasn't easy, but if you have perseverance, if you work hard for what you want, you can always do it. So all you have to do is dream it, work for it, and then you can make it. Um, language barrier is not a problem. Um, no more. If you make that as an excuse, I'm going to say no language barrier is not a problem it's all in your head it's all in your heart is what you want for yourself uh, <clears throat> so if you want to succeed in life and you want to succeed in a good way work hard because things are not going to be placed in front of you and make it easy they're going to be hard and the hard path is always the best the easy path probably not Wade physical therapist assistant and occupational therapy assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Cossetot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced, our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Cossetot, your career starts here.
Well, we're back courtside where the Colts lead North Ark 54 to 43 in this men's contest here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. And the uh, Colts led by as many as 20 in that first half and uh, saw that lead dwindle back to single digits at one point. But uh, anyway, we're about 2.20 away from the uh, start of this uh, second half. And in looking here, I'm thinking my computer may have just locked up, which is kind of scary. <laughs> Hate it when that happens. Let's try that. All right, that looks a little bit better. Scared myself there for a minute. Anyway, in that first game tonight, Lady Colts came away with a victory, avenging an earlier loss at Harrison earlier this year, winning tonight 57-49, as Samaya Smith had a big night with 19 points, 14 points this evening for Kiana Holly and 13 for Hannah McLean. Now the Colts, on the other hand, as we said, jumped out to a big lead saw North Ark cut it back and uh, are up at the half by 11, 54 to 43. And uh, both teams doing some damage from the perimeter tonight. As we mentioned earlier, North Ark has hit six three-pointers. Five different players have hit a three so far. Colts, on the other hand, have a couple of threes from... Uh, Nick Moye, a couple from Dylan Glover, and another from Jordan Reese. As far as the foul situation is concerned tonight, neither team in any serious trouble. Uh, other than Kahari Loggins, he has three personal fouls. He picked up a couple early, came, sat down for a minute or two, went back in, finished the first half with 10 points, but he didn't play a whole lot in that basketball game in that first half. Nobody on North Ark's team with more than one at the present time, at least not on my list. So it looks like we're just about set to get underway. Colts looking to even their conference record at four and four. And Pioneers are four and four at the present time. These two teams, the Colts win this game. They'll be able to pass North Ark in the, in the conference standings. Of course, everyone at the present time in the conference is chasing the undefeated National Park team. And the uh, Nighthawks are 8-0 in conference play. And the Colts will be traveling to Hot Springs on Thursday night next time out. Colts have the basketball to start the second half. So here we go. Kevon Wally, midcourt, gets it out to Zion Harper. Harper gets it in the hands of Moye. Nick tries to attack, gets inside, has that shot rejected out of bounds with some authority by Javon Calmeets. Calmeets with a block shot. Colts have put it in play underneath their own basket. They get it into Moye. Moye to Wally. Wally will bring it back out. Left side, Gupton has his pass stolen away. Pioneers will bring it quickly down court underneath. Stumble inside, let's see, late, late call. Personal foul is gonna be on Gupton. Not saying he didn't foul, I'm just saying I thought he got by with it. Gupton picks up his first personal foul at the free throw line. Will be Javon Calmes. Javon's first trip to the free throw line tonight and he snuggles that one right into the net. Calmes with three on the evening. Makes it 54-44, Colts on top by 10. 19.25 to go. Second shot also good. Calmees with four, and the Colts lead is cut to double digits, or single digits, I should say, at 54-45. Uh, Colts in the corner. Throw the ball away, and the Pioneers get it back. Inbounds pass. Into the hands of Calmes. He'll work it ahead to Parlow. Parlow out beyond the arc. 
Finds an opening, drives down, puts it up, and a whistle and a foul on Moye. They're going to call that on Harper. Harper called for the personal foul. That's his second. At the free throw line. James Parlow, shots on the way and good. Parlow with four points now. He hit a three in that first half. He's got four. Colts lead back to eight. 54-46, second shot, it's good. Colts will have it facing some full court pressure. It's Kahari Loggins, breaks free, drives through the lane, scoops it up, can't get it to go. Rebound comes off to the Pioneers. Allen has it on the perimeter. Goes around the screen by Jones. Kicks it left side. They'll get it to Jones. Outside free throw line. Loose ball. Out of bounds off of the foot of Wally. Q got over there to create the problem, but he couldn't come away with it. 18.38 left in this one. Colts on top, 54-47. Inbounds pass. They're lobbing it down low, looking for Jones. And they're going to call a foul on Harper. Well, Harper's picked up his third personal foul. He's picked up two quick ones here within the span of less than a minute and a half. He's going to come out. Dimaje Hampton's going to check in. Pioneers will put the ball in play on the baseline. They get it in. Loggins trying to work against, work on Matt Jones. Jones in the paint. The guy is unbelievable. Spinning around, Matt Jones puts it up and in. Jones with a basket. He's got 11. Driving the other way, Wally puts it up, can't get it to go. Colts have went cold here, as Hampton had it momentarily, and the ball goes out of bounds off of Hampton. Colts have hit a dry spell here. Leading 54-49 as the Pioneers have scored the first six points of this second half. Driving through the lane, off the glass, no good. Whistle foul, that's going to be on Hampton. And heading to the free throw line to shoot a couple will be James Parlow, who's two for two at the free throw line. And I have five points in the game. Hampton just picked up his second personal foul. Like Terry Gupton's going to come out of the lineup, checking in in his place will be Dylan Glover. Glover in the lineup now. At the free throw line, Parlo sends it on the way and it's good. Parlo gets another free throw. And the Colts' lead is down to three, 54-51. Colts work it right side. Into the hands of Moye. They're working a little weave up top. As Wally works it right side. Moye gets it back out to Wally for three. That one will not go. But grabbing that rebound was Moye. Had his shot blocked. Loose ball on the court. That's Glover. Gets it down low. Kahari Loggins with the left hand. Kisses it off the glass and good. Loggins breaks the ice for the Colts. After the uh, Pioneers have scored the first eight points in the second half, shot underneath, there he is again, Matt Jones. 
Another hard to believe basket down there. He's got 13 points and none of his baskets look easy. It's that, it's that upper body strength. He can just push that ball in. Wally tries to attack down low. Cross courts to Moye. He has a loose ball, stripped away, picked up, coming the other way, laying it up and in, no good. Start to say up and in, I premeditated that basket, but there with a tip in was Jordan Turner. Turner's got five and the Colts lead is down to one. 56-55, timeout on the court. We're back in a moment here on N88radio.com. Hey, Ratchet, stuck! I'm you! <laughs> Jake from State Farm. You couldn't find a standard that looked anything like me? Have you seen mine? It's like looking in a mirror, right? Now that one makes sense. Look, guys, I don't even have a stand-in. Of course you do. Hold on, is that Drake? That's right. I'm Drake from State Farm. Like, like a, a good, good neighbor. neighbor. Like, like a, a good neighbor. neighbor. Stand-ins don't have lines. Oh, okay. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. In DeQueen, your State Farm insurance agent is Luke Billingsley at 870-642-2157. Colts lead it, 56-55. They've been outscored 12-2 to start this second half. And that 11-point halftime lead they had is withered away to just one single point. Colts led by as many as 20 in that first half. In a dogfight here to start this second half. Colts will break the timeout with Nick Moye, Kevon Wally, Dylan Glover, Kahari Loggins, and Dimaje Hampton in the lineup. Pioneers will send their five back on the court. 16-20 to go in this ball game. Inbounds pass to Wally. Wally working, attacks the lane, gets it out to Loggins. Loggins finds a little bit of room, goes in, foul. Attacks the basket and the personal foul. It's going to be called on James Parlow. Parlow's first. And heading to the free throw line will be Kahari Loggins. First foul of the second half against the Pioneers. Loggins at the free throw line, puts it up and in. Loggins with 13 points now, his first point from the free throw line tonight. That was his first attempt. Colts have 14 fouls, Pioneers one. Second shot by Loggins, good. Kahari now with 14 and the Colts lead, 58-55. Bounce pass right side, Matt Jones. Goes around the screen, attacks, puts it up, can't get it to go, rebound, tipped around, and the Pioneers come out of there with it. They're getting every loose ball. Good hustle on the part of the Pioneers. Jones works it back left side. In the corner, three-pointer on the way, draining it. That's going to be Jordan Turner. Turner with a three, his second of the night. He's got eight, and we're tied at 58. Kahari Loggins walking that one off. Looks like that left leg's giving him some trouble right now. Wipe up that perspiration with 15.44 to go in this ball game. And that 11 point lead the Colts had at halftime has evaporated in the first four minutes and 16 seconds of this second half. Glover will make the inbounds pass. He'll get it in to Moye. Moye quickly across the timeline. Gets it out front to Loggins. Loggins really favoring that left leg. Wally out beyond the arc. Tries to attack, goes in, lays it up. Can't get that shot to go in the rebound. Pulled down by Turner. Jordan Turner working it the other way. Gets it ahead to Parlow. Down low, shot put up underneath. No good, rebound. 
And the rebound's gonna be pulled down by Wally. Wally ahead to Glover. Dylan fires from three-point land, nails it. Big three by Dylan Glover. Glover with his third three of the night. And we've got some more perspiration out there on the court. Sixty-one fifty-eight Colts on top, fifteen oh four to play in the game. Looks like we got it all taken care of. We're set to get back to action here. 15.04 to go, Colts on top by three. Pioneers with a basketball, that's Parlow. Working up top, Parlow takes it left side, gets it back out front to Turner. Jordan inside the arc, gives it to Parlow. Back up top, Turner with it, attacks, lays it up in the lane, can't get it to go, and the rebound comes off to Glover. Dylan gets it over to Q. Here come the Colts. 14 and a half to play in the half, or in this game. Loggins out to Wally. Q directing traffic. 12 on the shot clock. Glover with another three. He had a hand in his face and he buried it. Glover, four threes on the night. Colts on top, 64 to 58. Trying to build that lead back up. Pass back to the trailer. Shot put up, no good, but there's a whistle and a foul, and that's going to be on Loggins, I think. Is it? Yes, it is. Kahari called for his fourth personal foul. Big foul right there on the big guy. Head to the free throw line. Will be Curtis Fowler. Fowler's first trip to the free throw line tonight. Got two points in that first half, and he's got one to go with it here in the second half. Loggins will check out, Aquino checks in. Aquino, Glover, Hampton, Wally, and Moye in the lineup for the Colts. Second shot by Fowler, it's on the way, and it is no good. Rebound, out of bounds, well, almost out of bounds. Nice save that time by Hampton. Got it back over to Aquino, and the Colts will come the other way. On top by five, 64-59. Aquino setting the offense here. Out to Glover. Glover, nice give to Wally. Wally goes baseline, gets it back in the corner. Three-pointer on the way. Hard off, no good. Rebound comes off to Glover. Shot clock down to one. They said the, uh, they're discussing whether that shot hit the rim or not. They'll discuss it. And the officials will rule that ball did not touch the rim. I wasn't sure it did either. That was a close call one way or the other. So the basketball goes back over the Pioneers on that shot clock violation. They'll work it left corner and ball goes out of bounds. Last touched by the Pioneers. Colts get it back after that turnover. They were looking for Pulford in the corner. Ball got away. Colts coming the other way with it. That's Dylan Glover. He'll pull up for three. Oh, I thought that one was in there too. Hampton goes sky high to get that rebound. Back out to Glover. He'll take another one. Yes! Dylan Glover. Three threes here in the second half. Colts on top. 67-59. Jones. Went up, foul inside, gonna be called on Glover. Jones will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple right here. Matt Jones, 13 points in the ball game. He's five out of six at the free throw line tonight. Shots on the wing, good. 14 points for, Glo for uh, Matt Jones, 67-60. Colts 
up by seven, make it six as Jones hits the second one. Colts will have it on the far end as Aquino will make that inbounds pass. 12.57 to go in the ball game. Shot clock is yet, there's a game clock, there we go. Now we got the game clock rolling. <laughs> Moye gets it out to Wally, left side Aquino. Aquino with it, lob pass inside. Moye, quick pass in the corner to Glover for three. That one will not go. Rebound Hampton underneath. Wow, all kinds of contact under there, no call. I understand Coach Stan's frustration. Seemed to be a whole lot of contact allowed on one end and maybe a little bit more on the other. Now there's a foul underneath. And the personal foul is going to be called against Plumley. Excuse me, that's uh, Kelsey Tarver. I'm sorry. That's Tarver's first personal foul, by the way. And heading to the free throw line will be Dylan Glover. Glover's first trip to the free throw line tonight. He's got five threes. He knocks that free throw down. 16 points for Glover. He's got 10 points in this second half. Meanwhile, the Colts only have four other than that this half. Knocks that one down as well. Colts on top, 69-61. 12.38 left to go in the game. We're on a pace to see both of these teams, at least one of these teams, maybe both of them, hit triple digits tonight. That's Matt Jones with a ball at the free throw line. Dribbles inside, puts it up, can't get it to go. Damage Hampton clears the boards. A little window washing up there. They're working left side, Glover. And the ball tipped away. Good defense that time by Matt Jones. Colts turn it over. 12-13 left. He'll get it in to Parlow, James. Gets it ahead, works it left wing, goes down low, couldn't get the shot to go, got a tip up, couldn't, would not go, and the rebound put up and in by Kelsey Tarver. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Tarver with a basket, he's got three points. Colts up by six. Wally, top of the key, goes around the screen, backs back out again. Hampton came up to put a screen on the defender. It's, Wally goes in, can't get that shot to go. Jordan Turner with a rebound. Here come the Pioneers. They trail by six, 69-63. Try to attack inside, back out front. Three-pointer on the way, right side, no. Rebound, Hampton. Hampton gets it to Glover. He'll get it in the hands of Aquino. The Colts have come the other way. Leading 69-63. 11 10 left in the game. Looks like... Uh, Eddie Gonzalez getting ch to check into the lineup. Moye has it on the wing. Out to Glover for three. Dylan shot, no good. Rebound, Matt Jones. Jones looks around. Pioneers didn't have numbers. They'll bring it into the front court. Jones working against Glover. Pass in the corner. Back up top. Driving through the lane. Shot partially blocked by Hampton. Chases down the loose ball. Gets it to Wally. 10.30 to go in the game. We're stuck at 69-63. Colts on top by a half a dozen. Left side Hampton. Wally fires up the long three. No. Rebound. Aquino hits the deck. And that's going to be a foul on Jordan Turner. Maybe a really good acting job that time by Aquino. Turner gets the personal foul. And let's see. Let's see some folks get a breather right here. Jordan Reese comes in. Also coming in, Eddie Gonzalez. Uh, looks like Terry Gupton's back out there again. Nick Moye. And Aquino has it. The inbounds pass. Tipped out of bounds. No. Last touch by the Colts. Went off of Reese's hands, apparently. 
and the Pioneers get it back. Colts may be putting some full court pressure on right here. They lead at 69-63, 10-15 to go in the game. Out on the right wing, Pioneers have it. Looking underneath. Pass underneath, loose ball, and traveling's the call. So the Colts will get it back. After we wipe up some perspiration down there, I do believe, right? There we go. North, our coaching staff, can't believe there wasn't a call on that end. Maybe that was a makeup no call. Like Matt Jones gets set to check back in the lineup for North Arc. Colts will have it on the far end as Aquino will trigger the inbounds pass. They'll be facing some full court pressure right here. Coming out of the lineup to make room for Matt Jones will be Curtis Fowler. Aquino will trigger the inbounds pass with 10 one We're at the halfway point of this second half. Colts on top, 69-61. Aquino works it in the corner. Gonzalez back out to Moye. Nick goes around the screen. Gets it out to Jordan Reese. Reese gets it off to Gupton. Right side it goes to Aquino. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Aquino slid behind the defender. Laid it off the glass and good. Aquino gets his first two of the night. Colts on top by eight, 71-63. Pass down low, Aquino. Tipping it away, but Eddie Gonzalez is going to be called for the personal foul. And that's going to send Matt Jones to the free throw line. Gonzalez picks up his second personal foul. Matt Jones will head to the free throw line. He's got 15 points on the night. Nine of those from the free throw line. That one's no good. Rebound. Loose ball. Chase down. And... Possession there of points to the uh, Pioneers. And again, we're going to wipe up some more perspiration out there. Nine twenty left in this one. Colts on top by eight. 71-63. I think we spent about as much time wiping up perspiration this second half as we have playing basketball. Certainly uh, affects momentum, I would think. But then again, you don't want to see players get hurt. Safety first. Safety first. Pioneers have it on the perimeter. With it out there, that's Parlow. Attacking the basket, shot no good. There's Gonzalez with a rebound. Jordan Reese with it, here come the Colts. Leading 71-63, nine minutes to go in the game. Reese, pass off of the fingertips, ouch. They had jammed his thumb, that hurt. Javon Kalmas, Kalmas coming out of the lineup. That pass went right off of his thumb. Curtis Fowler's gonna check in in his place. Now let's see, what now what? Oh, we got uh, Jordan Turner checking in. And coming out will be Trey, uh, Trey Pulford. Colts will have the ball on the, on the baseline. Get it in to Gupton. Terry working out there. Defensively on him, that's Allen. Shot clock down under seven. Reese, bounce pass over to Moye. Moye pulls up, and the rebound, air ball, comes off to Turner. The uh, Pioneers bringing it quickly the other way. Allen sets it, gets it out to Turner, long three-pointer, that guy can shoot lights out. 
Jordan Turner with a three, his third of the night, second in the second half. He's got 11 points in the ball game. Colts lead down to five, 71-66. And let's see. They got to get that clock going here. Looks like there's 8.44 on the clock. Took 11 seconds off the clock. Eight forty-five to go in the game. Those Ashdown Elementary students making some making some noise tonight. Let's go, Colts. Let's go. Yeah. Inbounds pass to Wally in the backcourt. 71-66. Colts on top by five. Zion Harper back in the lineup for the Colts. As Gupton needs some help. Gets it off to Wally. His shot, no good. Rebound. Gupton gets it. Gets it back out to Reese. Jordan Reese backs it out. Jordan Turner putting on the uh, pressure. Pass underneath. Gupton with the basket. Reese, the assist. Terry Gupton gets the basket. He's got four tonight. Underneath. Shot. Ball. Out of bounds. Who's got it? Looks like the Pioneers will have possession underneath their own basket. 8.06 to go in the game. Colts on top by seven, 73-66. Inbounds pass, Jones, turn around shot in the lane, yeah. He doesn't need much room. He didn't have much, made his own. Colts lead down to five, 73-66. Out front, that's Reese. You get it to Wally. Reese working, free throw line, bounce pass underneath. Harper puts it up and in. Jordan Reese with another assist. Harper with a basket. Shot put up, no good. Harper with a rebound. Zion coming alive. Colts have it. 75-68, up by seven. A lot of time to go. 7.20 left in this game. Pass underneath, Harper! Yes! Great pass by Wally. Harper lays it up and in, and we've got a timeout on the court. Our score, Colt 77, North Arc 68, back in a moment on N88radio.com. Casatot Physical Therapist Assistant and Occupational Therapy Assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Casatot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Casatot, your career starts here. This new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay, I'm gonna try it first. Yes! I need to try it first. Wow! We're back courtside, Colts on top, 77-68. As the Colts have seen that lead cut down to one here in the second half. They've expanded it back now to nine. Led by as many as 20 in that first half. You knew North Ark could make a run. 7-10, there's still time for plenty more. With the basketball, that's Allen. Works it right side to Turner. Turner, facing some pressure up top. Harper's got to be careful, he's got four. Three-pointer on the way by Turner, will not go. Rebound, Harper tipped it around, and Reese. Wow. Looks like Reese wound up on the court when it was all said and done. We'll see what happens here. As it looks like, Curtis Fowler may have got a little 
aggressive there. The officials talking to the uh, North Arc coaches. Trying to sort this one out. Seventy seven sixty eight for I think that's six forty eight to go in this game. We'll see what they call. Officials explaining it. Now I guess he'll come at, he'll talk to the uh, scores table here in a moment. Loud raucous environment tonight here at the Bank of Locksburg gym. Okay, the officials have made their decision. They've talked it over with the North Arc bench. And we'll see what happens here. It looks like Fowler's coming out of the lineup. Getting set to check back in will be Kelsey Tarver. The officials are still talking it over. Now they'll come talk to the scorer's table, I guess. All right, maybe. They'll talk to the official score. Now, Coach. Coach Dan waiting for his explanation. We'll see. Okay, they're calling the Casa Top players to their side of the court. I've seen uh, episodes of television sitcoms that didn't last this long. It's been a long discussion here. They're still working on it here. They'll figure it out at some point. I know breakfast is in about, what, two hours? I don't know. You know, maybe if everybody in America talked to each other as much as we're talking to the coaching staffs right now, we'd all get along a lot better. And I'm not sure either coaching staff is going to be happy here, so I'm not sure exactly what they're coming up with here. But neither coaching staff has seemed very happy. So let's see what they decide to do. Coach Stan getting his explanation. Now then. Now they've got up on the scoreboard that Jordan Reese has a foul, okay? And looks like Fowler is gonna head out there and shoot a free throw. And the officials are talking about that even. So, we'll see exactly what we decide to do with this. Well, Fowler's going to stand out there and shoot a free throw. 
So haven't heard from the scores table exactly what that was, but Fowler missed the front end of that opportunity. They'll have another one coming here. Crowd is making some noise. That one fell in. Now then, are we gonna walk to the other end and shoot a couple, okay? So apparently, we had a foul on Reese and then a technical foul on Fowler. At the free throw line, Dylan Glover. Glover, two for two at the free throw line tonight. He's got 17 points, make it 18. 78-69, and if I'm not mistaken, Colts will have the basketball after this free throw. Second shot's good. And let's see, no, actually the ball will go with, the Colts go, yeah, the Colts get the basketball after that technical foul. So, Colts have the basketball and a 10 point lead, 79-69. Reese attacks, goes in, puts it high off the glass, can't get it to go. That ball did everything but go down. Rebound, sky high, Kelsey Tarver. Brings it back down the other way. Three pointer on the way, that's Jordan Turner with another three. And he just got teed up. And I think they may have said he was taunting in his call for the, third, for the technical foul. That'll be his second. Dylan Glover's gonna go back to the free throw line. And the Colts will get the basketball after this. Shots on the way, good. Dylan Glover has hit five free throws in a row here. Made his last five in a row, I should say. Second shot on the way, at six. And the Colts will have the basketball, correct? So the Colts lead it, 81-72. That was a big three by Jordan Turner. And the officials after that exchange a moment ago were trying to stay on top of everything out there, not letting this game get out of hand. As a pass over to Gupton. Terry, across the timeline. Backs it out, works it back, attacks the basket, fires it back out. Glover with it. Dylan goes baseline, lays it off the glass and good. Good basketball move by Glover. He has come alive in this second half. 17 points. Glover, three-pointer up and in. Colts have the basketball. That's Wally. Colts leading 83-75. There's still 540 to go in this game. Wally's gonna be fouled. Personal foul is gonna be called by on uh, James Parlow. That'll be his second. Wally gets up. Good move by Parlo. Hey man, that's me. I didn't mean to. Good sportsmanship. All right, now we're gonna wipe up some more perspiration here. 542 to go. Colts on top by eight, 23 points tonight for Dylan Glover, 17 of them here in the second half. Five three-pointers this evening. Glover has it, gets it in the hands of Reese to Wally. Wally, a lot of contact down there. Let's see, Matt Jones is going to be called for the personal foul. Zion Harper's going to the free throw line. Jones called for the personal foul. That's his first. 
Head to the free throw line, Zion Harper. Harper always has that little hop on his free throw shots. See, it's usually effective though. He's a good free throw shooter. He's got eight points tonight. This will be his first trip to the free throw line. Y'all watch this. Oh, that one did not go. Shouldn't have bragged on him too soon, I guess. Pass down court. In the corner, three-pointer on the way in there. Jordan Turner back in the lineup. Knocks down another three. He's got four of them tonight. 18 points in the ball game. Excuse me. He's got five of them in the ball in three pointers tonight. 17 in the ball game. There we go. With a basketball. That's Gupton. Picked up the dribble. Gets it back out to Wally. Colts on top by five. Nine seconds on the shot clock in the corner. Gupton goes all the way. Right side. Reese needs to take that shot. Puts it up and in. I don't know how he got it over the defender, but he did. Reese with seven. Colts on top by seven, 85-78. That's Allen. Gets it back up top. Fowler has it. Works it back right side. Jones has it, three-pointer. Can't get that one to go. There's Gupton with a rebound. That guy's everywhere he needs to be. Wally with a basketball. 85-78, 420 to go in the game. A long, long time left in this one. Let's see. And a sideline violation. Looked like uh, Reese may have stepped on that sideline. And the Colts turn it over. 85-78, 415 to go in the ball game. They'll bring it into the front court with the basketball. That's Pur Perlo. As the shot's put up by Jones, can't get that one to go. And Aquino, Jones, is going to be called for the foul. And he's going to be uh, called for the personal foul. That's only his second. Aquino will head to the other end. Edwin. We get a chance to shoot a couple here. 401 left to go in this game. Colts on top by seven. That's Terry Gupton heading to the free throw line. I said that was a keynote, but that's Terry Gupton at the free throw line. He was the one that uh, Jones had neck tied down there. Gupton tonight. He's got four points. This is his first trip to the free throw line. And again, we're doing some housekeeping on that other end. 85-78. Gupton will shoot the one and one. Again, he's got four points in the ball game. Colts need every point they can get right here. 85-78, shots on the way. That one's in there. That one kind of kept everyone in suspense as it rattled around for a while. We're going to wipe up some perspiration on this other end. That may be coming off of Coach Stan. That's right there in front of the bench. Colts lead it by eight, 86, 78, 401 to go. This North Arc team though, you know, they ate up 10 points of that 11 point halftime lead in the first four minutes of the second half. There's plenty of time. Second shot, Gupton won't go. Rebound, comes off to the Pioneers. Shot up and in by Allen. He's been fairly quiet this second half. He's got 17 now. 12 at the intermission. Colts lead down to six, 86-80. Gupton has it, they'll work a weave out front, take a little bit of time off that clock. Reese with it, goes right side. Wally's gonna back it out. Now he's gonna attack. Jones working against him. Gets it out to Reese. Reese has that pass out of bounds. I think he was looking for Gupton to make a cut. Colts throw it away, up by six, with 3.24 to go in this one. Allen will bring it into the front court. Gets it back up top, Fowler has it. Tries to attack inside, working against Harper. They'll fire it back out front. 
Get it to Jones. Jones working one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, nice give through the lane into the hands of Fowler. Fowler puts it up and in. Give him the basket. Give Jones the assist. Colts lead down to four, 86-82. Wally tries to attack, lost the handle, gets it right back again. He'll go up inside the lane, can't get it to go, hits the deck, and the ball out of bounds. Last touch by the Colts. 240 left. Colts lead by four. Looks like uh, Nick Moye, Edwin Aquino, and Kahari Loggins coming in. Right, Terry Gupton's coming out, as is Zion Harper. So it's Moye, Aquino, along with Glover, Loggins, and Wally in the lineup for the Colts. 2.40 to go. Allen has it. Gets it off to Jones. Jones, wow. He's so strong, personal foul, and 23 is personal foul is going to be on Glover. That's his first, I believe. Coach Dan saying, thought he took an elbow in the back. Well, Jones goes to the free throw line. That one falls off. No good. Tell you what, Jones has played a heck of a ball game tonight. He missed his last two free throws, however. Shots on the way, and it is good. Jones, 18 points tonight. And the Colts have it, and they lead by three, 86-83. Moye gets it in the hands of Aquino. Aquino working around the perimeter. Luck finds Wally on the baseline. Bounce pass to Glover, thought about the three. Shot clock's down to 13. Glover works, clears out, gets up, lays it off the glass, and good! Dylan Glover with a basket. What? A technical foul on Glover. They call taunting on Glover after the basket. Tell you what, officials keeping control of this one. Glover second at the free throw line. That'll be Jordan Turner. Turner, of course, was called for a technical after making a basket himself a while ago. He's at the free throw line. That one's in there. That's Jordan's first free throw attempt of the night. He's got 18 points on the evening, 15 of them from beyond the arc. They're making some noise. Shot on the way by Turner. It is good. And the uh, Pioneers get the basketball back. Trailing 88-85. Allen has it. Here come the Pioneers. Under two minutes to play in the ball game. Fowler. Actually, that's not Fowler. That's Matt Jones down low, working down there. And whistle and a foul. That's going to be on Moye. Moye called for the personal foul. That's his first. Matt Jones heads back to the free throw line. He's eight out of 11 tonight. Make it nine out of 12, 75% not bad. It's a two point game now, 88-86. A minute 51 to play in the game. Second shot, good. And Jones. The Pioneers have cut that lead to one, 88-87. Pass down court to Moye. Ball's gonna be picked up by Wally. Minute 35 to go. Wally trying to drive and whistle, foul, and that's gonna be on Fowler. Foul on Fowler. That's his third. That's gonna send. Kevon Wally to the free throw line. Q on the night. 0 for 1 at the charity stripe. Eight points, all of them in that first half. 
Shots on the way by Wally, it's good. Q with nine, Colts up by two. 89-87, a minute 35 to go in this game. Second shot, good. Q with 10, Colts up by three, 90, 87. A minute 30 to go in the ball game. And we've got a timeout on the court. Or oh, wait a minute, a whistle away from the basketball. What? Well, apparently they're gonna call it on Aquino. And Jordan Turner's heading back to the free throw line. Turner at the charity stripe, sends it on the way and good. He's three for three at the free throw line tonight. 20 points so far this evening. Colts lead down to two, 90 to 88, a minute 30 left in the game. Second shot, good. It's a one point ball game. Colts have it. Pioneers will back off, pick up the pressure on the offensive end. Aquino with it, near the center court stripe. Gets it back over to Glover. Lob pass inside, Kahari Loggins. Whistle and a foul and that will be called against. See who they call this on. Looks like Loggins is going to head to the free throw line one way or the other. The personal foul is going to be called against Kelsey Tarver, his second. Actually, no, that's not Tarver. That's Allen. That's his first at the free throw line. Loggins missed the front end of that two shot opportunity. He was two for two at the free throw line, 14 points in the game thus far. Shots on the way, out no good, and the rebound comes off to the Pioneers. They haven't led since early in that first quarter, and we've got a time, or first half, I should say, and we've got a timeout. A minute 11 to go, Colts 90, North Arc 89, back in a moment on n88radio.com. Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, is it the best Coke ever? No! Yes! No! Yes! No! Yes! Okay. I'm gonna try it first. Yes! I need to try it first. Before I forget, if someone asks if you want your quarter pounder's cheese on top of the patty or right below it, your answer is yes. The hottest, juiciest quarter pounder yet. It's perfect. Made perfecter. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Your season of life, you'll find the financial products, digital tools, and friendly service that make you feel right at home with Farmers Bank. Come home to Farmers Bank. to go. Colts lead North Ark 90 to 89. After the timeout, North Ark will have the basketball in front of their own bench. They haven't led since early in the first half. North Ark with it. They try to attack the baseline and a slip and a fall. And traveling will be the call. It is slick down there. As Allen was trying to attack the basket, feet came out from under him. And the ball goes back over to the Colts. Colts will have it after that break. A minute four left. Colts have Edwin Aquino, Cuban Wally, Dylan Glover, Kahari Loggins, and uh, Nick Moye in the lineup. Colts have won their last two get, uh, conference games in a row, trying to make it three in a row. Colts got off to a really slow start this season. Lost by 17 when these two teams got together in January up in Harrison. Been a much better game tonight, and that's a traveling call on Aquino. 
Colts turn it over. Each team has turned it over here in the last 20 seconds. And the Pioneers get it back. Trailing 90 to 89 with 59.4 to go in the game. Pass to Turner. Turner gets it out to Jones. You got to double team him. Jones goes in, can't get it to go. Rebound, Wally. Colts have it with 48 seconds left. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Colts back it out. Wally gets around his defender, fires it underneath. Loggins went up, foul, Matt Jones. Or was it Jones? No, it was not. Sorry. That's actually going to be against Parlo. Parlo called for the personal foul. That's his third. Head to the free throw line, Kahari Loggins. Loggins two out of four, but he missed his last two free throw attempts. He's got 14 points tonight. Make it 15. Colts up by two. 91, 89, 35.2 to go in this one. Second shot by Loggins. No, Jones is there for the rebound. Here come the Pioneers. 31 seconds to go, and we got a timeout on the court. Our score, Colts 91, North Ark 89. We're back in a moment here on ed88radio.com. Look at where we are. Think of what we can do. What we're building together is special. And at Southwestern Electric Power Company, we know it's only the beginning. We can do more to improve our communities, our lives. We can reimagine how we use power and where that power comes from. We believe every person, no matter how unique, makes us stronger. By working together, the energy to accomplish our dreams is boundless. Casatot Physical Therapist Assistant and Occupational Therapy Assistant programs in Ashdown are designed to give our students the skills needed to be job ready in only 30 months. At UA Casatot, our instructors are knowledgeable and experienced. Our classes are affordable and small, and our facilities are big and well equipped. And you'll find our graduates on the job all over the four states area. And that's something to celebrate. Application deadline is March 1st. UA Casatot, your career starts here. Thirty point four seconds left to go in this game. Colts lead it by two, 91-89. Pioneers have it after the timeout. Glover, Aquino, Loggins, Wally, and Moye in the lineup for the Colts. Lady Colts already won tonight. Like to make it a doubleheader sweep if they can. With the basketball in front court. That's Allen. Allen needs some help. Gets it over to Fowler. Pass down low for Jones. Working, working. Ball tipped away. And it's off of the Colts. 16 seconds left in the game. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Regardless of what happens here, the Colts should get another possession. Pioneers fire way out front to Turner. I think he could shoot out there. Left wing, back out to Turner for three, in and out, no good, rebound, rejected, Hari, Hari Loggins blocks the shot, whistle and a foul, and Loggins is going to be called for the personal foul, that'll be his fifth. So Loggins is called for the personal foul and going to the free throw line, will be Curtis Fowler, Fowler, is two out of four tonight. He's got six points in the game. Let's see here. Looks like Zion Harper's gonna come in. So it's Harper, Boye, Glover, Aquino, and Wally in the lineup. At the free throw line, Fowler shot no good. 
4.1 seconds to go. That's a big miss right there. There's 4.1 seconds remaining. Oh, those Ashdown Elementary School kids making some noise tonight. Second shot by Fowler in there. Colts will have it on the baseline with four seconds to go in a timeout. Four seconds left in this one. We've got a timeout on the court. Back in a moment on N88Radio.com. Colts lead it 91-90. Casa Tot Colts merchandise is now available at the ERCs in DeQueen, Ashdown, and Nashville. Come on in and let our friendly staff show you around. We have a lot to choose from, including t-shirts in a variety of styles, colors, caps, hoodies, polos, long sleeve t-shirts. We have joggers and stuff like coffee mugs and insulated thermal tumblers, as well as flash drives, lanyards, and power bank chargers. Just let the staff know what you need, and who knows, they might even model it for you. Show your Casa Tot school spirit. Get your Colts merchandise today at an ERC near you. Colts have the basketball for the final 4.1. A setup facing pressure all over the court. Long pass down court to Wally. Lost it momentarily. He still got it. Goes to the baseline. We're done. Wow. Final score. Colts 91. North Arc 90. Back in a moment to wrap it up after this on N88Radio.com. Walk into the Coca-Cola facility in Nashville, you get a taste of Southwest Arkansas history from the past 100 years. The Wilson family bottled their very first Coke in Nashville back in 1911, and the rest is history. The office in Nashville offers an outstanding museum of Coca-Cola memorabilia, and it's open free to the public weekdays from 8 till 4. The Nashville Coca-Cola Distribution Center employs 20 people and serves several counties in southwest Arkansas with a complete assortment of Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper products. The Wilson family is known for their generosity in our community, and they're thankful to southwest Arkansas for your support over the past century. And the Colts are thankful to Coca-Cola for everything they do for UA Casatot. score tonight. Colts win it 91-90 and what a game. Colts led at the half 54-43 after leading by as many as 20 in that first half. But North Arc came out in the second half, scored the first 10 points of that second half, got that 11 point lead to one. Colts never trailed but they the game was never uh, put away. And what a ball game. We expected it would be. We hoped it would be simply because the first time these two teams played uh, January 18th in Harrison didn't exactly go the Colts way as uh, North Arc wound up winning that game. What was it like a 92 77? I think it was like a 15 point win. And uh, anyway, Colts with this win. Even their conference record at four and four. They've lost their, they've won their last three conference games in a row. Ah, see that. And that's big. They now pull ahead of North Ark in the standings. North Ark falls to five, four and five in conference play. Leading the way tonight for the Colts 
was uh, Dylan Glover. Finished the night with 25 points, including five three-pointers. He hit three in that uh, early or about midway through that uh, second half when the Colts' lead had been cut back to one. He came alive, wound up the night with 25 points. 15 points tonight for Kahari Loggins, including a couple of, uh, uh, well, a free throw down the stretch that the Colts really needed. Looks like 10 points each for Dimaje Hampton and Kevon Wally. Eight points tonight for Zion Harper. Seven points for Jordan Reese and Nick Moye. Five points for Terry Gupton. Uh, did I mention the eight points for Zion Harper? Two points for Timon Proby and Edward Aquino. And the Colts needed every one of them tonight. Meanwhile, too bad somebody had to lose tonight. Jordan Turner wound up with 21 points to lead the way for North Ark. He had 18 of them in the second half. He had five three-pointers, including four of them in the second half. I looked to go along with four for four at the free throw line down the stretch. Meanwhile, Matt Jones, another great game for Matt. He wound up with 20 tonight. He had nine at the half, 11 in the second half. 17 points tonight for Orion Allen. And uh, those were the only three pioneers in double figures. Again, that final score, it was UA Casatot 91, North Arc 90. In the ladies' game tonight, Lady Colts held on for a 57 49 victory, avenging a loss uh, back on uh, January 18th in Harrison as uh, Lady Colts were led tonight. 19 points for Samaya Smith. Also tonight, Kiana Holly had 14 points, including four three-pointers. Looks like uh, 13 points tonight for Hannah McLean for the Lady Colts, as they had three players finish in double figures. While North Arc had Carson Edwards finish with 13, and Kaylee Patrick had 11. Lady Colts run their conference record to uh, three and three on the season, while North Arc fell to four and four. Again, Lady Col the Colts and Lady Colts sweep the conference doubleheader tonight here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. Next time out for the Lady Colts will be Thursday night. They'll have a makeup game with ASU Mid-South. That'll be here at the Bank of Locksburg Historic Gymnasium. Is that right? No, that's not right. Let me find my schedule here. Yeah, I've got it somewhere. <laughs> All I got to do is find it. I know that... Uh, Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, this uh, Thursday night, it will be the uh, the Colts heading over to Hot Springs to take on National Park. National Park, ranked number one in the country, undefeated in conference play. And uh, they'll be at home taking on the UA Casa Todd men's team. That's a 6.30 tip-off. Catch all the action. We'll post all the uh, live streaming uh, information on ed88radio.com. Also... The uh, Lady Colts will be at home on Saturday. They'll be at home with a makeup game with ASU Mid-South. That'll be a 2 o'clock tip-off this Saturday here in Locksburg. For all of us at 888radio.com, we want to say thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you next time. Good evening.